Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today we shall be going over every single epic in Gems of War as of hitting 1,000 troops. So epics are a little bit of a weird category. Uh, they're kind of the in-between between the lower rarity stuff and the super high rarity stuff. The main thing to really note about them is that they have quite a spike and in increase compared to the upgrading cost of an ultra rare, while not having the unique traits that every single legend and mythic has. Like, for example, this Yagwe over here has a completely unique trait uh, to him, and uh, same as every other legend and mythic. Uh, however, uh, epics don't have this while still having quite a bit of an increased cost. Uh, for example, they require 12 arcanes instead of 3 compared to ultra rares. They also cost quite substantially more when it comes to arcanes requiring epic ones, or um, when it comes to uh, tokens, I mean, where they require uh, epic metals in order to be uh, upgraded, whereas the most common ultra rare ones are what ultra rares, of course, end up uh, mostly utilizing. So quite a bit of an increase in overall uh, upgrading this. Uh, in cost for very little benefit. Uh, very few epics are particularly good, with a few exceptions, or exceptions of course, um, but for the most part ultra rares and pretty much every other category, even things like uh, quite a few comets and uh, rares, tend to be better, though if nothing else they do tend to get picked for arena quite often because, well, they have the highest stats, they're the first thing you draft as well, and uh, there are a couple good ones. Uh, there are a pretty big category of useless epics though, uh, that are basically dead content, um, old uh, raid and event troops. There are a few of these that are good, but a good majority of these, similar to stat buff related ones, are pretty much just pure skips, like things like this, they're, they're just generally going to be pretty bad. Um, compared to some super low rarity stuff damage wise, some of them might be a little better, and the fact that they can do the extra to raids or to uh, towers and uh, bosses can come into play on occasion, however, uh, there's just a few of them that are good, and those few just outshadow every single other one that exists. So in the case of this one, it's just basically a dead content. As far as Alistair, it's just a gigantic um, armor buff, not really the greatest, uh, quite a few other things that can end up armor buffing uh, better than this thing, so it doesn't tend to get used, however it is the free epic from Kedar, that's another thing too, there is a free one for uh, one per kingdom, um, one of which is really insanely good, actually a couple of which are pretty insanely good. As far as Algarak, the Slayer, ends up dealing some damage to the first enemy and it's a useless uh, raid invasion troop. Uh, as far as Amira, it does some true damage, double if they're blue, can occasionally get a one shot, not really worth it otherwise. Uh, as far as uh, Ankit, ends up dealing some damage and uh, if they're a tower, deals more and creates some skulls, another one of those useless raid invasion troops in uh, case evasion. So, Anointed One, um, this can actually be summoned by a couple different ways, ends up gaining some attack and life and transforms all green to red to boost the effect. Uh, whenever it gets summoned, it does end up getting the red off the thing that summons it, so it can kind of go a little bit crazy into another convert. Uh, however, do keep in mind, summons do not come in with their starting traits. Uh, while it would have Frenzy, it wouldn't have stuff like the 50% mana start, so it would still need all 12 of its mana, and for that reason, not necessarily the greatest there. Here's another uh, double gem spawning thing. Uh, overall, not really that useful. It basically, this has a spell attached to it. Plus, it does uh, doesn't really feed too well into itself. It does have the little bit of green there. However, the fact that it has air link makes it so it uh, feeds a little bit less compared to if it had a green link uh, back into itself. As far as Apothesis, uh, that is one thing that epics do have pretty well, and that is Empowers. Empowers are um, mostly concentrated within epics. We did see some in Ultra Rare. Uh, however, as far as like the Convert Empowers that make for quite a few builds, um, they are primarily so associated to epics. That's one of the few things that epics does do uh, very, very well, if nothing else. Ends up converting all greens to skulls, and then gives a bunch of life to uh, the first ally. There's also a... Um, attack variant of that that converts yellow which we'll be getting to at some point i forget where it falls alphabetically but is indeed underneath the epic category as far as this thing it dispels an uh, enemy and then deals some damage and then gains some magic and enchants itself pretty useless not really going to be used much as far as acturian uh this thing's actually pretty decent at times um i don't feel like i use it much though but it creates some brown gems boosted by uh, blue allies and then freezes a random enemy one thing that's pretty nice about that is having blue allies is a pretty consistent thing because you know you just start with it it's blue itself and if your entire team was blue, it would end up creating a total of 16 um, gems, brown gems, consistently every single time for 12 mana costs while also being able to tank pretty well in first slot with a 65% reduction. Uh, I feel like it's very rarely used in the current state of the game. However, it's pretty nice. Uh, main reason why it's not used too much is uh, Apothecary. Apothecary exists and it's a lot less conditional on it working. So um, that's one of the reasons, but it's still not bad. As far as the uh, Argus, it chooses a color, removes all uh, gems of that color, and it dispels the first enemy and drains their mana uh, by the number of gems removed. It's a conditional mana drain. Generally, anything that is a conditional non-full mana drain tends to be pretty bad, a few exceptions. However, that is not one of them. As far as Asha, converts all blues to choose a, um, of a chosen color. 
an enchant a random ally and gives him uh, some magic. Basically, just a little bit of a buffer with a small convert. Not very too special. Atlanta uh, might seem pretty basic because it is. It's just a standard full AoE. There are occasional instances where this comes into play. You also get it for free from the Divinion Fields uh, Kingdom. Uh, but the main thing that actually makes her sometimes occasionally viable is she has air link so she feeds that into herself and has a little bit of an aoe for a relatively cheap um generally things that hit all enemies cost uh, quite a bit more while doing this kind of damage uh it's still kind of uh, weak overall but the fact that it has air link to synergize with it already um can definitely make it a bit spammable i feel like there's some world events you end up running her for just because of how spammable she is and a few other instances like that overall it's the most basic aoe in the entire game uh literally just doing that and nothing else however uh there are still some occasions where it comes into play due to its low mana cost combined with the link as far as the Aspecia, it uh, gives a bunch of life to an uh, ally and then removes all uh, blue and red gems. Uh, sorry, all uh, all blue and then uh, red and brown gems uh, from the board. Overall, it's a really, really heavy um, remove. Um, I'm actually curious to see if they're ever going to add more things like this. In the current state of the game, I don't really feel like this thing is ever built around because its traits are absolutely abysmal. Not a single one is useful, uh, which is rather unfortunate because if it actually had really good traits, like a pervious, stealthy, something else, um, like if it was a legend or mythic, for example, that's one big issue epics have. Uh, they don't have like a really good, like strong trait. While there are plenty of legends and mythics that have a ridiculously useless uh, final trait, uh, generally speaking, they're not as useless as what epics have. Uh, which is a big problem holding a lot of epics back because if this thing actually had a better trait set up It would probably be used like if this thing had empower impervious and like something else this thing would be used a lot But um, yeah, it, it just isn't because it just doesn't it, it just takes too much to get rolling It doesn't have any traits to go with it uh, Vina uh, oddly enough fun fact first trip to ever have any amount of soul gain in the entire game uh, Back in the day when the game first started you had to farm by getting one soul per cast off of a Vina It's pretty funny but uh, as far as Avena deals some damage to an enemy, and if the enemy is undead, it deals triple damage and uh, gains some skull souls. Uh, you're basically never going to use this unless you're in a really weird situation against a pure undead team, because it does double to undead and then triple to undead. Uh, for the most part, you're never really going to touch her. It's just an epic you get for free from uh, Gulvania, and you're basically going to never touch it again. Azurus is kind of interesting. There's a lot of weird gimmicks that you do with this. This is the lowest mana cost epic in the entire game. Having only a 6 mana cost, really wish they would have done this more. Uh, generally how uh, rarities work, of course, is the higher rarity you go, the more mana cost they have. However, there are a few exceptions to that. And Azurus is one of those few exceptions. He has a ridiculously low mana cost. Uh, technically even lower than uh, Thrall, if you really um, put it up to it, because it uses two colors instead of one, while still having Magic Link. Uh, which is kind of like what Thrall is. It's a 6 mana cost purple with Magic Link. However, it only uses one color, not two. Theoretically meaning that its mana cost is a bit lower. Because if you're doing an explosion or something, it gets up even quicker. But as Necromancy has that little bit extra mana going into it, getting up even easier. And basically, you can actually spam its ability. If there's 13 plus purple on the board, it ends up gaining 6 mana. And well, 6 mana is all of its mana. So you can kind of keep spamming this over and over again. It's mostly used just to kind of connect skulls. Uh, particularly if there's a gap where you can end up getting a 4 times or a 5 times. Alternatively, you can just do it to match two skulls in order to make it into a three and then just get a skull poke uh overall not really use that often it is so ridiculously situational however it's not horrible um it will always have some kind of usage within the game just due to the fact that it's rather unique especially per for particularly for an epic really wish there was more options like that uh so uh, i've kind of referenced azura quite a few times uh there's a couple different things that can do a lot of uh, stat reduction within the game however uh, when it comes to one of the most spammable if not the most spammable azura tends to be one of the better ways to go uh, not only does it have arcane to end up making its uh, amount of stat reduction even higher but it also gets to dispel enemies while mana accumulating quite a bit it gets to explode all blues so uh, this thing gets to mana accumulate it gets to dispel and it gets to remove a bunch of stats from the enemy uh, this um, is a little bit of a lower amount of stats compared to some things uh, within the game however due to the amount of mana accumulation that it ends up doing it uh, ends up being quite a bit better value than pretty much everything else that uh, can end up reducing stats uh, generally speaking reducing stats method isn't really something that is used however if you are going to use it uh, you get this for free from Relantis so uh, that's generally the way you want to go if you're going to be going around that method uh, as far as the uh, Baba Yaga, and speaking of things you get for free, uh, this thing has a double silence, pretty decent, uh, mostly used for arena, however you can use it outside of arena, just as a double silence, uh, and uh, just kind of go from there. Double silence the last, it has a little hut, uh, that little hut does extra damage to silence enemies, so kind of has some synergy there. As far as the Baal, ends up dealing some scatter damage and jumbles the enemy team, overall pretty bad, however jumbling the enemy team uh, is very situational. <laughs> Um, there's other things that can do it a bit more effectively, like Rope Dart and other similar options. Uh, overall, generally not worth wasting an entire troop slot just to do such a method. 
Um, plus to mention, uh, after he does it for the, for the first time, you kind of lose quite a bit of value there, Forth. Uh, as far as next one, we got ourselves a Bahir. Ends up dealing some damage to an enemy, and if the enemy is a monster, ends up entangling them, and if uh, they are a dragon, deals triple damage. Overall, this is too situational really bother using, uh, even though it can get a little bit of dragon counter there. This one ends up creating a bunch of yellow gems and deals some damage to an enemy, boosted by yellow gems, and then enchants it's itself. Uh, overall, not really going to do much, and um, yeah, just a really weird poke overall. Its setup is just very unfunctional compared to quite a few things. As far as Bane Jaw, this is one of those uh, null like troops, has Bloodlust, has double against purple, um, ends up having the um, extra damage on purple for its triple damage and can miss. It's just a standard null troop. Uh, oddly enough, despite it being tied at the highest rarity of the nulls, it is one of the weaker ones, um, which is kind of funny. But uh, despite it being highest rarity, it's not that good. Uh, Barbarius, you basically don't use in any context other than Arena, just explodes a gem and deals some damage to a random enemy. Boosted by each brown gem destroyed is basically just Arena pick due to the high 5 times boost ratio, so if you explode like, uh, four, uh, brown gems with its ability, you just did 20 additional damage to a random enemy, so pretty strong in that regard. Uh, Bargist is really situational. There's actually a mythic that's kind of based on Bargist, which oddly enough is actually weaker than this troop, which is kind of funny. But, uh, it deals, uh, damage to an enemy and the enemy below and then burns and fairy fires them. Um, it also has a explode at the start of battle as well as a little bit extra damage to go and synergize with this. This is pretty much auto win the second you draft in arena like quite a few epics are. As well as um, it can be used as a alternative fairy fire method prior to having other methods. You can also use it with triple damage burning hero classes so that's a little bit less effective. However it is a strategy that can be uh, done with it if you so choose. Overall uh, pretty nice troop. Uh, not really something you would use too much later in the game just because there's better burning at methods. There's better fairy fire methods. Um, however as you're kind of progressing into the game it's uh, pretty nice thing just to kind of have around can do a lot of damage and um yeah we're pretty all, all all around just good at uh just kind of dealing out some damage and poking out the enemy very quickly as far as uh boz bone beater it's one of the four uh new gnomes that were added that are of the epic variety from the uh, mana surge band um they are all equally useless as far as what they do and they are basically accumulated simply for completionist purposes they're not even associated to a kingdom they're all horrifically bad uh, as far as the uh, Bur Bur and Gary, gosh, these names, it's a useless um, uh, a raid uh, uh, tower troop thing. <laughs> Not sure what to call them. I need something quick so he does to get rid of them. But a good majority of these are just uh, useless tier events. Let's just call them that. Useless tier event troops. Uh, this one just entangles all enemies if ends up getting a kill. A uh, good majority of these uh, we're pretty much going to be skipping unless they're really relevant what they do. Uh, which there are a few of them, but uh, generally speaking, they're just pure skips. Just because they all have this kind of same premise. Yeah, it's another one. Uh, there's just too many to really mention how bad they are. <laughs> Anyways, as far as uh, Blackfire Cannon, uh, this thing is yet another one. Gosh, there's so many under epics. But uh, yeah, quite a few of these just don't have any kind of effect that makes them even remotely noteworthy between each other. As far as Bone Golem, it explodes a gem and then inflicts a bunch of death marks uh, to a random enemy for every skull destroyed and then gains a bunch of attack and armor. Uh, it's pretty good within the sense of its faction, however outside the context of that faction, not really too good overall. Uh, it does have that kind of um, golem aspect going to it, specifically this one for Deathmark. Uh, this one for pretty much nearly every stats effect in the game, and this one just happens to be for uh, the Deathmark effect. As far as Bone Biter ends up dealing some damage. Oh, oh, never mind. I thought it was one of the troops for a second. Uh, deals uh, some damage to an enemy if they are undead, uh, deal double damage, and there's a 50% chance to devour them, uh, gain 5 uh, life. There are several troops that are kind of set up like this to be like hard counter, a specific type as a giant. Um, pretty much every single one of these are useless. The only one that actually isn't useless is the one that counters goblins and the main reason for this is it starts with uh, empower so uh, for that reason similar to pretty much every empower in the game it's not useless simply because it has the empower uh, if it wasn't for that empower it uh, would be and uh, pretty much every single other troop that is categorized underneath this category as far as like these giant counter devouring beasts uh, they're not really that good uh, unless it's the one that has empower that counters goblins the gob uh, biter i think it's called i can't remember now <laughs> he's uh, not used too often these days just because goblins aren't as meta but um yeah, he's like the only one that's actually viable of them. Uh, Bonnie Rose, pretty good. Um, actually a great way to do one shots. Um, it's pretty solid. It will auto win you arena. You can use this as a good damage source going through the game. Uh, obviously, there are better ones out there. Uh, most notably Tesla of the same mana cost of one rarity higher. However, it's a great one shotting option and you're generally going to hit max gold anytime you use this. So it's, um, it's pretty noteworthy in that regard. So overall, not too bad. As far as the Boar Gok, it ends up dealing some damage to an enemy and is a useless uh, event troop. Uh, this one ends up creating a bunch of uh, red gems boosted by uh, orc allies 
and uh, enemies, and then gives uh, one attack to all allies, which seems very ridiculously weird that you would do that. Uh, oddly enough, it'd actually be more beneficial if you just did one damage to all allies, which a couple of the orcs kind of have that kind of premise, like the legends and stuff, um, because that would at least trigger their traits, uh, because all of them, or most of them, have something like uh, gain some attack or gain something else when they take damage. So that doesn't really make much sense at all, and he's pretty underwhelming. He doesn't even really get to create that many gems compared to quite a few lower rarity stuff we've already seen. Brian the Lucky, uh, at one point, <coughs> was the only way in the entire game to end up raising the magic stats, and um, it's still a weird way of doing so in the current state of the game. Overall, it's just not really worth it. You're better off just using Azura and lowering the enemy stats rather than raising your own Libas or using Humility if you're lucky to do this exact same mechanic in the current state of the game. Quick water sip. Gosh. <laughs> Recording all of these. <laughs> takes a lot of air out of you anyways uh let's see broker of greed this thing gives a bunch of random stats you're basically never going to use this outside the context of arena uh it's pretty good auto win in arena well man not auto win but pretty good amount of stats has that little bit of explosion uh overall outside of the faction outside of arena not really something you're going to bother touching as far as the bully no it ends up dealing some damage with a 50 percent chance to hit the wrong enemy and if they use uh, red deal triple it's just one of those standard nulls except it ends up gaining attack a little bit better than the brown purple one that we saw earlier though oddly enough both the two epic ones aren't that great compared to lower rarity ones uh, it's mostly because of their trait setup um, that ends up making them a little bit weaker. It's just kind of weird because the two highest rarity uh, gnolls are among the two weakest of the gnolls. Uh, Bold Taurus is basically Rowain, but for life. Has a 1 to 1 boost ratio and does scatter damage based on its life. Uh, this is basically obsolete because Rowain exists and is just better. As far as uh, Copernicus, it deals some damage to an enemy and if uh, they are a boss, ends up- Oh gosh, there's one that uses boss troops. Oh no, <laughs> there's so many of them. There's like th 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 Actually, every single kingdom should have- 64 of them so that means out of those 64 i think we skipped like 55 of them <laughs> that's still a lot of them underneath epics gosh um because uh every single kingdom has a raid one and every single kingdom has a tower one and only a small handful of them are actually even remotely relevant as far as captain skullbeard ends up creating some skulls boosted by treasure maps and then collect uh, uh maps collected and then explodes a bunch of gems uh overall very situational when you use it though it can be kind of used as an alternative exploder uh pretty good in a Arena, however, there's so many better man accumulators that you barely ever touch it outside the context of arena. Uh, it's not bad outside of arena, it's just um, there's better options, so you don't tend to use it too often. Unless you're using a really weird, like, skull spam uh, team that just needs a little bit of man accumulation. Or if there's ever some kind of team that actually gains a benefit from every single skull that's removed from the board in some way, uh, it could potentially be good. But in the current state of the game, it just isn't as good as other man accumulators. The 11 mana cost but at least makes it, like, somewhat viable. As far as Car Carlin Marshall, it's a useless dead content uh, troop based on um, uh, the old events. Uh, Carmela is the exact same thing, literally just gains 6 life, pretty underwhelming. Uh, deals, uh, this thing deals some damage to an enemy, boosted by uh, blue allies and blue gems. Uh, in normal battles, this is a completely useless troop, however, in arena, it just one-shots everything, so that's pretty fun. Um, but outside the context of arena, you would never really use it. As far as the, uh, uh Charinus ends up gaining a soul for each, uh, purple gem. Um, and then ends up exploding all purple gems. Overall, uh, not too bad of a uh, man accumulator, mostly because it can end up raising your souls while also having a necromancy. Uh, so there are some contexts of some teams where it can end up being used if it's specifically used for its necromancy and soul gain. If you specifically do not need the soul gain or the necromancy within a battle because you're not using a boost ratio that's associated to it, you'd basically never use this in your team. However, it's a good exploding option for when you are doing a soul-based team. So if nothing else has that going for it, but unless you're really specific go going all in on a soul boosting team um it is not really worth using child of summer so of all the converts this is probably one of the most noteworthy and power converts within the entire game it converts brown to red this is used for the yagwe queen Natania team which is one of the strongest teams in the entire game that doesn't use a single mythic and yeah it is absolutely devastating uh, it is, ends up replacing out tapon which is another epic that we haven't gotten to yet he's all the way at t's of course but, um, yeah, definitely really good. Ends up creating a Firestorm, uh, so it gets to uh, counter out the enemy storm if there's one in play. Or gives you a beneficial one for your team. <clears throat> we'll also be able to get rid of something like Brown. So if it's Brown Guild War Day, well, they won't have Brown anymore. So overall, pretty nice. Gets to do that from turn one. Really devastating. Uh, useless one for Mana Surge. Just one, one of the four gnomes. You would never actually use in a team. 
Cloud Stalker ends up doing a random amount of damage, and it is a useless old event troop. Uh, this one is a doubling to green and purple, very situational. I feel like a lot of these doubling trolls that have like the double double, um, they're all pretty useless, mostly because you're over gonna be overriding the two gems with each other, uh, compared to just doubling a single one off of like Farge Troll and other similar trolls, which we'll be getting to once we get lower down. Uh, they just seem to be better compared to just doubling a double. Uh, it just doesn't end up working out as well. Quaidle, I really wish this did a random storm as well in its ability, uh, but ends up just creating 12 gems of a random color. Overall, too inconsistent to really bother using. However, whenever it hits on purple or yellow, it can kind of be pretty decent. However, more often than not, it is just way too random to uh, ever be viable. As far as Craze Troll, ends up creating a mix of uh, blue and uh, purple, equal to the number currently on the board. Same thing pretty much as Corrupted Troll, just different colors. Uh, again, they're just not as good as the single doubling um, trolls that exists. All the doubling ones just aren't as good. Uh, this thing is insanely good in Arena, the um, Crimson Arrow. Ends up dealing some damage to an enemy if the enemy's attack is uh, weaker, it deals uh, some more damage. And if the enemy has Hunter's Mark, it deals even more damage on top of that. Uh, overall, um, pretty average outside of Arena. However, in Arena, it is just an absolute powerhouse. As far as the Crithenix 6, however you say this thing, it's always had a weird name. It is completely useless. It is the one of the only jumbles in the entire game that does not have an extra turn on it making it exceedingly weak, plus it has RNG all over the place. Uh, one pretty noteworthy thing about this, if I'm not mistaken, it actually has a base value of zero armor, um, which I believe is the only troop in the game that has a base value of zero armor. There might be one other, but um, yeah, it's one little gimmick thing that it has. You can see it in Arena whenever you draft an Arena, that it doesn't have any armor at all. So um, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting in that regard. Uh, overall, not really too useful at all though. As far as uh, Siren, she drains some uh, mana from an uh, enemy and then eliminates a bunch of magic and then stuns them um, and entangles them. Uh, overall, what it does isn't necessarily that bad. The problem is the mana cost and the traits that go with it. As a pretty much a reoccurring theme with a good majority of epics, they have a little bit too high of a mana cost than they should, and they have no good traits generally to go with it, unless they happen to, in which case they're actually good. Uh, Dark Knight, one of the more recent things that has come into the game, ends up destroying a column, drains some mana from the uh, first enemy uh, for every single uh, purple gem destroyed, and gains a barrier. This was one of the sets that actually set us over the 1000 mark. However, uh, overall, not really something you'd use. It's mostly just used for the pure faction as the tank, and that's pretty much it for its corresponding faction. As far as Dark Song, it ends up dealing some damage to an enemy, eliminates uh, some points from a random skill, and if the enemy is a uh, orc or a daemon, ends up stealing some mana. And steal does mean she gets to accumulate it. Overall, though, just not really that viable. She actually used to have a different ability where she used to hard counter green, and oddly enough, was actually stronger back then compared to how she is now. Uh, though in both states it was pretty bad overall, but it was actually stronger before it ended up getting reworked several years ago and uh, was actually made weaker by uh, the changes. Okay, so here we have the first troll of the actual trolls that are not useless to use. Um, this ends up doubling the number of purple gems on the board. There's one for every single color. This one doubles the purple plus three and ends up um, giving you a bunch of souls. Every single one of them that is like this can be viable to some degree using Titan Hero class in order to end up using its double even quicker by giving it a half mana start. As far as Dark Troll, it's okay. Ends up giving you a burst of souls and ends up giving you a lot of purple. Um, pretty much all of them are about the same, except for Farge Troll, which is very noticeably higher than the rest. As far as Daughter of Ice, it converts uh, red gems to blue, and then Kajur's a uh, Ice Storm has some power, so it's pretty much always going to be viable. It's one of those standard um, epic um, converters that uh, just end up getting a really nice convert from the starting board and just goes crazy. Mostly used on AI teams, of course, but um, still pretty viable. Anyway, as far as Deep Golem, another one of these Golem kind of troops, this one specifically ends up doing a barrier. Um, there's actually a mythic that's kind of like this, and this is basically a better version of that mythic, which is pretty funny. In most situations, that thing will actually be stronger than the mythic that also does a barrier that also counts as a golem. So overall, pretty nice solid tank. Um, good way to get four times barrier if you don't want to be rest messing around with Jargonian Monk, but you still need a cheap option to do so. Uh, one nice thing about this too is it's a faction um, epic as well. So you can end up doing it simply by doing a bunch of Chaos Shard and end up getting it that way. So it ends up working out pretty nice. As far as Deep Magnus, ends up dealing damage to all enemies and then curses or webs them. This might seem really useless, however, there are some situations where you might need specifically to curse. Um, this is a great way to end up applying such an effect. can also be a good way to apply web. However, the main reason to curse is relevant is if you're running some kind of Iron Gut team or something similar, you can end up running it for the factions and pretty much be uh, good to go. 
Uh, as far as the uh, Destemona, uh, it's pretty much just a daemon counter. You wouldn't really use it in any other situations, mostly to counter yellow daemons. And even then, it's not even the most effective way to really deal with it overall. So not really something you're really going to be messing with. Uh, we have another troll that ends up doubling. Uh, this one specifically does it for yellow. I feel like this one's used uh, quite a bit less, probably the least of the six uh, doubling trolls. However, it still has the same effect, essentially, and can still be viable. As far as the Destructobot, ends up dealing some damage to an enemy. With a 50% chance to deal uh, triple damage, and there's a 50% chance it will end up killing itself out. So, uh, overall, if this does hit the 50% chance to do triple, it's kind of okay. However, the fact that it can end up destroying itself generally doesn't make it used in any context other than the faction. Even in the faction, I don't believe it's really used. Uh, as far as Demostraxia, ends up doing some scatter damage with a chance to burn. Due to it not being 100% chance to burn, it's pretty bad. There are a couple other troops that are kind of like this as well underneath dragons, and they are all pretty much equally as useless as Demostraxia, but at least you get it for free from the uh, Darkstone, if nothing else. As far as Dokafer, ends up dealing some scatter damage and summons Giant Spider. Overall, pretty bad. Uh, at this point, you might as well just use Orb Weaver instead. We're using Life and Death. It's just way superior. As far as Dragon Crusher, there's another one of those kind of useless ones uh, that have the Devour to a specific counter as a Giant. It does have Impervious going for it. However, given that it doesn't have Empower, it just doesn't end up working. It's just too slow. You might as well just use proper damage sources and bother with that, even if you're up against a pure Dragon team. Uh, very situational if you'd use it. Uh, Dragon Spear is pretty much used, uh, only ever used on your team if you're specifically using the 50% Mana Start Dragon, in which case you basically never put it on your team ever. Um, it has a 75% chance to enchant. There's a couple of dragons, as I mentioned, that have this. All of them are pretty useless. Uh, unless you're, uh, you're, you're pretty much only ever going to get this on your team if you're using the 50% Mana Start Dragon and have him summon it. Um, or if you're using that 50% Mana Star Dragon because it's required to have this on your team in order to get his explosion. But aside from those two instances, you're basically never going to touch the thing. As far as Durgan, ends up uh, giving a bunch of uh, armor and three magic and is a useless buffer. Okay. But then again, it ends up creating some brown gems boosted by brown allies. So never mind. It's not a completely useless buffer. It's just a completely useless buffer that happens to have gem spawn. So at least it's not 100% useless. It can actually still get a nice beefy gem spawn and kind of be a little bit of value beyond just doing a useless buff. As far as Earth Caller, ends up dealing some damage to an enemy, boosted by its attack, and uh, it's, uh, this one is a slightly more relevant version of um, these troops. It is a useless event troop. However, due to it having this boost ratio, it does make its damage at least somewhat competent. So this thing can be pretty good at killing out um, uh, bosses. So if the enemy has a Zugoth or some kind of other similar boss, and they have a lot of extra stats than you compared to uh, what you have, if you have this troop laying around, it can be a really great way to end up dealing with them because um, you can end up using its ascension bonus, getting that extra damage, and basically one-shotting their troop at a little bit more consistency. <clears throat> if you don't really have um, really high damaging options in that regard, or you know, if you're up against an enemy that's way higher than you on stats, this could be the way that you close the gap in order to one-shot their boss troop. Exceedingly situational, however, slightly less useless than the useless other event troops. So at least has that going for it. Um, this one is one of those useless tower ones. If the enemy dies, just creates a bunch of blue. That does feed back into itself, however, there's currently only one tower owned player troop in the entire game and i highly doubt even if there's 10 that would even become relevant <laughs> as far as the elder of guardian it's another one of these useless things as is tradition um and let's see elf eater is one of the useless uh, giant devourer ones there's a lot of archetypes within the category of epics and almost every single one of them is bad <laughs> As far as Elwyn, uh, destroys a row and column and then deals some damage to a random enemy, boosted by yellow gems destroyed. Really good in arena, beyond that point it's not really going to be used. Um, you can kind of pick it up pretty early since you get it for free from Pan's Veil. Vale. However, there's already other things that we've seen, like the rare ranger underneath rares. That already does basically what it does better, for the most part, just without the board control. So for the most part, you don't really need it. Emperina is a, unfortunately a useless buffer. I used to love this troop. It used to be meta way back in the day, like six and a half years ago. In the current state of the game, it's just an entirely useless buffer. It has no board control. Uh, it's one of the only few ways you could do a full heal onto another ally, though, which is kind of interesting gimmick. However, it's a very underwhelming gimmick in the current state of the game. So unfortunately, it is not really used. Next up, we got ourselves the Envoy of Pride, which, guess what, is also a useless event troop. Uh, next, we have Arenas. It's basically kind of like Giant Spider, but it summons Quasits instead. Uh, overall, pretty bad. Not really something you're going to bother using. Uh, the only redeeming quality it has is if Jinx builds ever become meta at some point again. Um, it does have Jinx, so has that going for it. Outside of a Jinx build, it would never actually be used, which is why it's basically never used, because Jinx is not something that is currently viable. Um, this ends up exploding a bunch of uh, gems, and then um, a disease is a bunch of random enemies. Overall, just not really worth using compared to Truffle and other Exploders. Its mana cost is just too high to really justify using. It does have Impervious going forward, if nothing else, but that's one of its only redeeming qualities. 
Though, uh, unlike this, it has no redeeming qualities. It is just a useless old adventure. Vanessa, pretty interesting. Uh, once again, every single power pretty much useful. Few exceptions. This is not one of them. Ends up dealing damage to an enemy equal to their attack. Pretty good. And then gives a bunch of life to allies boosted by uh, damage dealt. So it's basically a healer that can also end up doing damage based on their attack. Overall, not that bad at all. And Empower makes it even more viable, plus it even has a link. So even if it didn't have Empower, it actually still wouldn't be too bad. Though the fact that it has Empower makes it pretty decent. Um, it's very rarely used though. But um, it's one way that you can actually do a flash heal at the start of battle. So um, that's very situationally useful. Though in the current state of the game, not too often. As far as Feldrass ends up just doing some damage with a chance to summon. Overall, pretty bad. Can be good in Arena, but beyond that point... Doesn't really end up getting used. As far as Fell Dragon, ends up dealing some damage to an enemy, boosted by uh, burning and diseased enemies. And that's basically it. Nothing really too useful. Pretty low boost ratio. Uh, well, six? Well, I don't know. When it comes to single target, six is pretty low. Uh, obviously, in something like Arena, it can be okay, though you need to be able to get those uh, stats effects. And by that point, if they're already burning, they're pretty much just going to be dying anyways if you're burning something in Arena. And not necessarily going to need all that extra damage anyways. Uh, you'd rather have a multi-hit or something similar. As far as Fenrir, it's just a useless buffer. Nothing really more to mention there. As far as Farah, it's an old mana drainer. Uh, luckily, it does have a full mana drain. The only problem with it is it's restricted to only hit the last slot. It does have a purple link to kind of get it going a little bit quicker. You do get it for free from Karakaroff Kingdom. However, overall, it's just pretty underwhelming and not really something you'd really bother with compared to something that can actually target with their mana drain. Uh, Finley, obtained for free from Pride Lands after the quest line, transforms all skulls into a chosen gem and then get some gold. This theoretically, if Skull Meta ever becomes so ridiculously absurd where you have to use this again, could end up being okay. It hasn't been meta for a very long time as far as viability. Uh, main issue with it is it's a relatively slow option, and there's not really much that uh, team synergy-wise that can end up utilizing it. Um, there is a chance he becomes really strong at some point in the future. Um, that just isn't currently like, the case. As far as first mate, uh, Axe Blubber is one of those standard um, Empower that have a Convert. Converse blue to red, pretty solid. Any of them that do that are. Uh, this was a troop I was mentioning earlier. It's an empower that ends up creating a bunch of uh, skulls while also gaining a bunch of attack. Uh, this is definitely more useful than the other variant of it that converts greens while doing life. However, um, yeah, if you're going to be using it, you just get the attack buff. You end up getting the skulls out of it. Uh, pretty good value. There's some skull rush teams that end up doing it where you basically get it on turn one and just kind of go crazy. Two of them tend to get used together as well. Uh, Flame Troll just doubles red. Pretty standard. Uh, used occasionally. Farce Troll, absolutely insane. If you are going to be using any of the trolls that have a doubling, Farce Troll is by far the most useful out of all of them. So this thing ends up doubling green. This is pretty noteworthy because of two troops, Truffle and Beatrix. Uh, main reason why these are so relevant is both of these two troops have an extra turn capability while also creating brown and green. Green synergizes with the fact this doubles green. Brown feeds back into the Farce Troll itself. So this is going to be very, very viable with uh, those two troops, as well as quite a few other greens, but particularly those two troops, to basically allow you to infinite. Uh, it's not a true infinite with Beatrix. However, with Truffle, the most infinite loop in the entire game can be done, where you have Farce Troll and the double Truffle. They end up nerfing this slightly with a higher mana cost. However, if you have a green storm, it can still be a true infinite, where it literally never stops once you get it going, and is uh, technically the highest amount of damage you can get uh, in the entire game. It requires a lot of setup, and is slower than many other teams, so it's not always used. However, its per turn damage is literally infinite damage once it gets going. So, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty strong in that regard. It's a good way uh, earlier on in the game to cheese stuff as well, since all you have to do is get a copy of Farstral and then get uh, Double Truffle from the uh, Kingdom of, uh, or the Faction of Amethrax. So, overall, really solid option. Uh, beyond that, its traits are also pretty decent. It has Entangle on Skull while also having 33% reduction, as well as having the normal regen off of uh, Trolls. Um, so, it's really tanky while also being able to do uh, one of the best converts uh, out of any of these um, uh, Trolls. So overall, pretty nice. As far as uh, Freddy, he's just one of those useless mana surge gnomes. He's just never going to be used. He's just obtained for completionist purposes. Uh, this thing is just a useless old uh, bounty troop. or not bounty troop, but old uh, event troop. Nothing relevant there. Uh, Freya, uh, once again, another one of these useless old event troops. Uh, this ends up creating a mix of uh, blue and red, as we've explained. The single color trolls are way better than the double color trolls. So super situational. Generally, it's not something you're going to use. This thing explodes a bunch of gems and then summons either a giant toadstool or an explode stool, gains next turn. The fact that this doesn't have a chance to summon like truffle or something is very unfortunate, <laughs> since it's kind of like a, a mushroom as well. But um, yeah, it's pretty underwhelming. Things it summons aren't particularly good, but um, 
yeah, it just has a little bit of explosion, no empower, no nothing else to go with it. Uh, similar to many things, it's kind of outclassed by Leprechaun. As far as the Gale, he ends up doing some damage to an enemy, and if the enemy is a daemon, there's a 50% chance to uh, transform them into a Wraith. Overall, pretty bad. Not to mention, Wraith actually isn't even that bad of a troop, so you're almost helping them sometimes. Uh, as far as Gargoyle, uh, pretty interesting troop. Uh, this one's actually very viable. It ends up boost ratioing based off of all the attack that is currently on your team, while also exploding some gems. So it has a little bit of loop ability, not like a true loop, but you know, against some of its mana back. Has some pretty hefty damage, doesn't have to worry about submerge. Overall, pretty solid option. Um, literally, it even has a 50% score reduction, 25% spell reduction. Uh, overall, just a nice kind of mid-range kind of troop that you would do before you have some of the better options within the game. Can also be good for running delves if you're looking for uh, like a double cast to do. If you don't have some of the better things that could just one shot like Guards Avatar, it can be a great uh, upscaling alternative method up to that point. It's generally not something you'd run all the way to the end of a delve. However, still overall not that bad. As far as the uh, Gurglantulus uh, cube, ends up doing some damage to an enemy, and if there's a 50% chance to uh, devour them, and if they are webs or specifically webbed or entangled, overall not something you're really going to use, even if it's 100% devour rate on them. Not sure if you'd even use it then, just because of how situational that is. Um, however, um, yeah, just too luck based to really bother using with how it's currently set up. Uh, this thing ends up dealing some damage to an enemy and uh, eliminates uh, some of their attack. However, the more relevant thing is that the enemy is a monster ends up dealing triple damage to them. So it's basically just a monster slayer. Uh, the other pretty relevant thing is, uh, unlike many of these counters, it actually starts with Empower. So this can be very situationally useful, uh, particularly if this is actually enough to one-shot whatever you're targeting. Uh, later in the game, you're, that's generally not going to be the case. You're not going to have enough damage to really uh, end up one-shotting. However, if it is the case where you're within range and you happen to want to use this, it can be okay. Um, if the enemy team's like a pure monster team and you can get away with a one-shot. Otherwise, probably not really worth messing with. As far as General uh, Saladin, he is one of the useless uh, tower troops. Nothing really to uh, mention here. Uh, just kind of standard, useless, um, old event troop. Uh, this thing ends up dealing some damage to an enemy and then steals uh, some points from a random skill. If the enemy is a mech, it ends up de doubling the effect. This used to be used occasionally. Though, compared to something like Tesla from the same kingdom, it seems very underwhelming. Um, at one point, this was actually kind of usable, but uh, I feel like in the current state of the game, there just isn't really much of a need for it. Unless it gets really lucky and hits on magic. If there's like a more consistent way to do that, it could be okay. Like if it consistently took magic and did that exact same thing, it would actually be pretty good. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is not what it does, and overall just isn't really worth it. I think there's some troops from Alithia that basically does what she does, but consistently on magic anyways. So um, yeah, compared to that, just pretty useless. Uh, as far as uh, Gimlet, it's another one of these really good empowers at the start. End up transforming green to brown to counteract green, while also enraging and giving a bunch of life to first ally, which can allow them not only to live, but also do quite a bit of damage. Glass Golem basically just puts a reflect onto your entire team. It's just one of those golems, kind of pretty standard golem play, and uh, just happens to be the reflect version. Pretty good. Uh, definitely something that you would utilize from time to time, um, especially if you want to build some kind of weird reflect build. Uh, overall, it's not like super viable. Most of these golems aren't. However, it's a great way to apply the stats effect when you don't have higher rarity stuff that can end up doing it. It's a great lower rarity option, similar to many of the other golems in the game. So Gob Trumper is his name. This is the one I was referring to earlier. Of the types of troops that have this 50% devour to a certain type that hard counters a certain type, this is the only useful one. This is mostly because all goblins have extra turn and are decently viable, and he has an empower to combat them, which allows him to get his mana way quicker, which also allows you to spam multiple of them if you so choose if they're using a pure goblin team. Overall, not that bad at all. Assuming at least one of your gob trumpers get to devour, you pretty much just auto win whenever you use it against like a pure goblin team. So how's that going for it? Overall, obviously very situational on um, if you're actually up against a pure goblin team, uh, as in all four of the troops being goblins. However, um, in those situations, it can be a pretty useful option to have. As far as uh, Gorthrum, it destroys a column and then explodes uh, two random gems for every yellow gem destroyed. Overall, not really anything too relevant. It's just kind of a weird mana accumulator. Can be okay for doing such, however, there's just better, more convenient options that aren't as messy as that thing. Uh, this ends up dealing some damage to an enemy, boosted by a uh, number of Whitehelm allies, and then gains barrier. Not for too special, can be good in arena, beyond that point, not really used. Uh, Grave Seer is <coughs> another one of those really good empowers. It has a single convert, ends up converting green to purple, and then enchants uh, the strongest ally, meaning that you get even more mana if they didn't already hit full from it. Next we have the Gravitus. As far as this thing, it ends up dealing damage to an enemy. And if it is undead or a daemon, end up draining all their mana and curses them. Very situational, not really something you would bother uh, doing. And uh, overall, there's better mana drainers that are a lot more uh, versatile with what they can end up doing. Uh, green Seer is uh, one of those converters. Uh, only 10 mana cost, ends up transforming a selected mana color to green and then entangles. 
Um, not as good as like Apothecary and such, however, it's still pretty good due to the Entangle spam. Uh, biggest issue with this is it is a random enemy and not first slot. So there are a lot of situations where you do this, you'll cast a couple times, it keeps hitting the same troop, and it will never actually hit their first slot where you re really need it to, where you get really unlucky and you have like a team of four on the opposing team, it keeps putting on third and fourth, and uh, you never get it on first and second where you actually need the Entangle. So overall, a little bit RNG based there, however, it can be useful from times. I feel like I run it for Guild Wars occasionally, because on purple and yellow Guild War, particularly purple, there's quite a few um, things that use green that you can end up feeding directly into and get quite a bit of good value there. As far as green slime ends up uh, creating a bunch of green and then converts all of them into uh, purple and then gains some random skill. Pretty underwhelming in the current state of the game. Could potentially be okay if a Jinx build once again ever becomes a thing again. However, overall, that's not a thing currently, so not really that useful. As far as Griff uh, Stone Feather ends up destroying a column, then deals a bunch of splash damage to a random enemy. Boosted by blue gems destroyed, not really something you're generally going to be bothering with. However, in the context of arena, can be pretty auto win. However, beyond that point, you're not really going to be using it. Its traits are kind of average, just have a good immunity trait. But beyond that, it's not really going to get much use. As far as the next one here, we have the Grimora. She ends up stealing a bunch of gold from an enemy and then uh, drains uh, eight mana from an enemy and freezes them. Overall, nothing really too special here. Um, there's so many better options and there's already things that can steal the entirety of the enemy gold. So just stealing a portion of it is uh, pretty underwhelming because if they actually have higher than that, then you're losing out on a bit of value compared to other things. Not to mention her side effect for it's just pretty underwhelming. Uh, as far as the half giant, it's uh, basically just a uh, useless uh, old event troop. Nothing special here. Uh, Harpy Mage, however, is pretty special. Uh, it is basically a leprechaun for uh, faction events um, or pretty much any event where you have access to enchant. Uh, the main reason for this is she has 75% mana star, 75% of uh, 14 with how this game rounds is 10. And uh, one pretty noteworthy thing about a 10 mana cost when you need 14 to fill is if you start with enchant on the first turn, you will have 12 mana because you get 10 off of 75% and then 2 off of enchant, which means on second turn, you have a guaranteed full mana, assuming they don't mana drain you somehow on turn one, which is pretty much near impossible, though it can still happen, Spirit Fox and stuff like that, like if you're doing in Tower of Doom. Uh, however, generally speaking, not going to happen um, for the most part, which essentially allows her to be a second turn in power. Basically like a Leprechaun, but she gets the castle on turn two. The main benefit that this has compared to a Leprechaun is that it gets to choose what color it does. Well, not completely, but, you know, it gets to choose an outline and there's one there colors randomly. So it's a little bit more chosen than always having to do green. And it ends up doing a brown storm. So if you really specifically need that brown storm, it can be pretty good. It's basically just like a second turn Leprechaun, but it has to be used in an event where you have access to enchant. However, in those situations, it is a very strong option. That is of the likes of Leprechaun, so definitely a really great thing to uh, end up considering, especially because it has completely different coloration than Leprechaun, meaning that when you're not allowed to use Leprechaun, you might still be able to use Harpy Mage, which will do effectively the same thing in many of those game modes where you're restricted but still have access to Enchant. So overall, really solid option. Uh, as far as uh, Hell uh, Cackle, it is one of those um, event troops that is not useless. This is actually um, the most viable boss slaying troop in the entire game uh this is going to get increasingly more relevant as time goes on because obviously as time goes on we're going to have increasingly more uh, bosses to actually kill that are player owned however the main reason why this is viable is it is a goblin and because it is a goblin it has an extra turn and because it has an extra turn that basically means you can go and mana loop throw this down go back to mana looping and basically get a completely free kill on any boss troop that ever exists on top of this, it has stealthy, meaning that they can't even target it down directly. So if like there's a Zugoff, you can't even target this. Um, so yeah, overall, really ridiculously solid. Uh, it's pretty much the only, it's the main reason why we're actually skipping over like almost every single one of these boss lane troops. Uh, for, for one, the tower ones just aren't as useful. But um, this is basically the only relevant, theoretically, there's a few others that still have okay effects. But generally speaking, this is the only old event troop, boss or um, tower related, that is actually ridiculously useful outside of the um, outside of the actual event, with a few other exceptions. Uh, mostly because as the game progresses, this will become increasingly better as the best option in the game to deal with boss troops. Obviously, in the current state of the game, there is only like what four of them. There's Zugoff. There's uh, as far as player owned ones. There's uh, Zugoff, there's some Rage Karandera, and Rage Karandera being absolutely horrible. And the two um, new Fox thingies, the Hatter and Scroll kind of trip thingies. Um, but yeah, as more and more come into the game, 
This will become increasingly more viable. In the current state, the game is almost never used unless you really want that Zugoff counter. However, uh, keep an eye on it as it's if you're going to be boss countering, this is what you should be using, Hell Cackle. So um, be mindful of that. Anyways, as far as Hellcat ends up transforming a selected mana color into red and just deal some damage, pretty standard converter, nothing really too special. Um, overall, pretty underwhelming compared to quite a few other mana accumulators in the game. As far as Hellclaw Warrior ends up uh, gaining some attack and uh, life, boosted by red and purple gems, and it conjures a Hellstorm, nothing really too special there. However, it does end up creating a storm of red and purple, which kind of synergizes there. However, it's basically a useless buffer that only buffs into itself. Herod of Chaos, you get pretty early on in the game. You get it for free from Bloody Land, so you got that going for it. Uh, basically deals damage twice. Uh, one is a, um, it gets to destroy a row, so you get mana accumulation board control, deals some damage to the first enemy, and then also eliminates some stats from the first enemy, and it's boosted based on blues. Pretty good in arena. Can be okay when you're first starting off. Overall falls off pretty quickly beyond that point, though. Uh, Herald of uh, Damnation. Uh, this is another one of those empower options. So as empower has um, ends up getting its uh, blue to uh, purple, and it ends up cursing and burning the strongest enemy. Uh, overall, it's used pretty much entirely for the blue to purple convert, and the fact that it has empower going into it. Uh, not the greatest of the converters, however, given that it is a converter, it will always have some amount of viability within the game. Um, so there's that for it. As far as Herald of Woe ends up destroying a row and gains a bunch of attack and uh, armor boosted by uh, brown gems destroyed. Overall, pretty underwhelming. Just basically buffs up itself, and that's basically it. Nothing too special there. Uh, it's kind of like a useless buffer, except it's a self buffer. Uh, this thing is useless. Don't bother. Uh, actually, uh, wait, is that the one? No. Um, it just destroys a random row. It's pretty bad. Um, you don't even get to choose what row it does. As far as Hex Rats, it's um, pretty much never really used. It just deals some damage to an enemy and all below. Uh, it's primarily just used for the pure faction, and there's just better AoEs out there. It's not like a super horrible option. It actually reminds me a little bit of Avena, just with a few other conditions and a few other things that can kind of end up doing. Um, however, overall, it's just really average and doesn't really end up getting much play. That's uh, typing also doesn't really make it too much better. It can occasionally be maybe used with like a wild folk team, but beyond that, it doesn't really get much use. As far as uh, uh, Hoagie, he's just one of those useless um, band uh, troops from the Mana Surge band. Uh, he's just obtained for completionist purposes. As far as Ice Golem, he ends up exploding a gem and then freezes a bunch of uh, enemies. Uh, okay way to apply freeze. Uh, there are much better ways to do so. However, it is a somewhat low rarity. It isn't epic, so not like super, super low rarity. But uh, oddly enough, it's probably just better to get the Frostfire Keeps Legends. Um, it's actually more consistent to get than epics, which is kind of a weird property of um, epics I haven't really mentioned yet. But uh, basically, faction legends are easier to get than non-faction epics uh, for the most part. Unless it's specifically one that you get for free from completing out a kingdom. Or if it's a faction epic, because, you know, then it's easier to get compared to a faction legend. However, if it's just a standard epic... It is actually harder to get a standard epic specifically than it ever is to get a standard uh, legend or epic from a uh, faction, which is kind of weird, uh, but it's mostly because uh, factions essentially always have event keys for them. Not in the direct sense that they you can event key for them, but in the case that you can use chaos shards, which essentially act as, um, as event keys for the specific faction which makes them a lot easier to get, which basically means that legend is better to get than his ice golem. And you might as well just use that instead, because if you're going to bother using it, you might as well get a burn as well and have a better ability. Um, but it's still there. It's a freeze option if you have it. It's not horrible, but um, there's better ways to apply freeze. As far as ice troll, it's another one of these double converter things or double craters. It ends up doubling based on blue-brown. Uh, we already kind of went over them. They're pretty bad as the typing. Uh, this thing ended up getting its art changed a long while back when it was first added, and I really prefer the previous art that it had. I can never get over the way that it currently looks. It just looks so weird compared to the original art they had that looked absolutely amazing for it. But uh, this thing just deals in uh, damage to an enemy and then uh, freezes them. And if the enemy dies, it just gains a little bit of magic to all allies. Pretty underwhelming. It was added ages ago and hasn't really been reworked. So obviously nothing too special there. Even in Arena, it doesn't even do too much. Uh, speaking about not doing too much, Ifrit, kind of same way. It just burns a random enemy while doing some scatter. There's obviously a billion different better scatter options out there that are just may outclasses it completely. Uh, Igneous, uh, pretty underwhelming. Uh, does have a convert red to brown, so at least has that going for it. But aside from that, it's kind of one of those useless old uh, event troops that um, can kind of be used for boss lane. I guess if you really want to counter a boss that way, it can kind of work. But uh, overall, just not really worth it. As far as the Lithian um, Servitor, ends up dealing damage to all enemies and then steals a bunch of magic from all survivors. If they don't survive, it doesn't get the magic. Uh, overall, nothing too good. It's basically just a kind of standard AoE. Uh, no board control whatsoever or any kind of follow-up, which uh, similar to Hexrat, similar to Vina, is something that kind of makes it, unfortunately, not as useful. As far as the uh, Indelator, Ends up draining some mana from all enemies, 
and uh, then gains a bunch of armor and life. Overall, pretty underwhelming. It's just not enough drain. There's already other things that can end up doing something kind of similar that kind of completely outclass the thing since it's not doing a useless buff. Iron Bark, um, actually not too bad. Ends up entangling a random enemy when it ends up... Actually, never mind. This isn't the one I think it is. Um, but no, that one's actually pretty bad. It just does a random entangle. Uh, there's one that actually does an armor tier, and I'm trying to keep an eye out for it. Uh, because it's one of those other few that actually isn't completely useless underneath that category. However, as is pretty much most of them, they're just kind of really bad. The uh, old event troops. As far as Iron Draw, destroys uh, all skulls and gains a bunch of life and armor, boosted by skulls destroyed. Nothing really too special there. Uh, it's plus it's denying your skulls, so it makes you move very slowly. Uh, even in the faction itself, I don't even believe it's used, just because it's just it's such a slow option. As far as uh, Ishul, ends up uh, dealing damage to an enemy, and if uh, they are a tower, uh, it's one of the useless ones. It does create a light storm, but nothing really too special there. It's just a useless old event troop. Speak about useless old event troop, another useless old event troop. Uh, next up, we uh, have half the magic of the uh, strongest enemy, uh, and then explodes uh, purple gems equal to the magic lost. Uh, overall, this can be a weird way to kind of do um, magic reduction while doing mana accumulation. Compared to other options, it's not really that viable though. Compared to just webbing, compared to just using a proper mana accumulator, um, like you're better off just kind of using Leprechaun Weaver, Arachne Weaver, or something similar if you kind of want a similar premise to this. Overall, it's not really something you're going to bother going out of your way to use. However, it's a weird, interesting utility troop, if nothing else. But other things just outclass it, make it basically useless. As far as Keg Hammer, he just deals some damage to some extra giants, eliminates some magic. Pretty bad, however, he is a strong um, giant counter. It's kind of similar to that one troop that is a monster counter, except this one does it for giants specifically, where it has the triple damage. So if you can get a one-shot on them, it can be okay. However, in most contexts later in the game, it does not have enough damage to do the one-shot, so it doesn't really end up working out. As far as the next one here, we have the uh, useless... Uh, actually, this is one of the... Um, this is actually another one of the uh, old event troops that is not useless. This gains 12 mana back if the enemy dies. So one thing that you can end up doing this... Uh, for one, it's good in Arena, because if you get a kill, you get all of its mana back. However, this is good if the meta ever develops to have more than one boss troop on your team. Um, I highly doubt this will ever become the case anytime soon. It might, maybe in a year or two. However, at that point, she will actually become uh, unuseless once again. Um, mostly because if she gets a kill off of a boss troop and um, you end up doing that, you end up having all of her mana back. Meaning that you could basically just go through their entire team and kill every single boss troop one turn at a time. Uh, which is obviously pretty devastating. Um, so, there's that. That's the main reason why you would ever use her. I highly doubt that's ever going to become a thing. Although, you never know. There might become a meta where like two, three, who knows, maybe even four ball strips. I highly doubt it though. Uh, will be used on the same team. Um, if that ever comes to be, this thing can actually be pretty good. Otherwise, it's pretty much just an arena pick and nothing else. Uh, aside from that, uh, Kat Kat Katib uh, to here. Also, uh, keep in mind, she does actually gain full mana if you don't kill a boss as well. It's only specifically when she gets a kill, not when she gets a boss kill. So it can be done on anything. It's just realistically, obviously, she has pretty low damage. So it's generally going to be a boss that she's going to be killing due to the multiplier that it has. Uh, this thing ends up giving a bunch of life and attack uh, to an ally. It's a useless buffer. Okay, there we go. Uh, this is a useless treasure. Just kind of standard treasure. Nothing really too special there. Just used to upgrade the underworld. Actually, I haven't even maxed it out yet. Oh, I could if I wanted to, though we're not going to be right now. Uh, actually, we don't even have enough copies to. As far as Kobold, uh, Magi, plus it's better to use on the uh, treasure hordes anyways in the underworld. It just, this thing destroys a column, does a bunch of scatter damage, and either does an extra turn or gains some magic. You occasionally draft an arena, but beyond that point, you're basically never going to touch the thing. Uh, just way too underwhelming. Even early on in the game, it's just way too underwhelming due to how random it is. Um, this thing ends up dealing some damage to an enemy, boosted by poison enemies, and then summons one to two missile scale troops. Overall, pretty underwhelming. It's better summoners out there, better damagers. Has no board control on it. So overall, nothing really too special with this thing, and definitely not worth using. Uh, something that is worth using, though, uh, Lady Nuriel. I don't feel like it's used too often. However, it has some pretty direct synergy with things like uh, Vinoxia. Uh, can end up kind of being used with Truffle Team and stuff like that as well, though generally not uh, as much. However, uh, it's kind of like one of those Vinoxia kind of supports. I feel like that's the main thing it gets used for if it's going to be used at all. Overall, pretty underwhelming in the current state of the game. However, not completely useless <coughs> due to the fact that it ends up creating specifically these colors. As it does have some direct synergies with other things that directly create those colors as well, or very similar colors. As far as uh, Lady Garnett ends up being a very useless old event troop. Uh, as far as Lady Ironbeard, it has uh, a triple damage if she has a higher armor than them. This can be very situationally useful if you can get a one-shot, because you just keep one-shotting if you have a lot higher armor. And as long as you maintain a higher armor than your enemy, you just keep one-shotting them. Uh, very situational, however, if you're at the point where you can be just one-shotting everything with it, can be useful. 
uh, as far as uh, as well as a really good pick for arena as well uh, as far as lady sapphira she actually without being changed at all with this exact same stats she was at one point the strongest troop in the entire game with exactly that ability which is kind of funny because uh, obviously way back then uh, four life and two attack actually matter it matters so much that her ability used to be gain five life and two attack at one point when she was end up being uh, changed a little bit and she was too overpowered and she had to be nerfed down to four that's how big of uh, that's how long ago <laughs> she was meta <laughs> like six and a half like almost seven years ago um, but uh, since then, yeah, she has not aged well and is very ridiculously bad to the point where you would never use her. Uh, there's so many better true damage builds that are just never going to touch her. You get her for free from uh, White Helm, which is rather unfortunate because that used to be a good thing way back in the day. And now it's just very pitiful and just, just completely useless. As far as Lamish do, uh, ends up converting all uh, or has in power and has a convert all yellow to purple. This is a rather interesting option. Because this can actually be used on your own team to deny your own color when you're using a pure color on yellow Guild War Day. It might seem like a weird strategy to do, but if your enemy team is already planning on doing it, you could basically counter them before they counter you. It's a little bit weird that it converts out one of its colors. It's one of the only few empowers, if not the only empower currently, that actually has this kind of uh, gimmick where it converts away one of these own colors. However, any of them that do do this can end up doing it on the Guild War Day that they correspond to and basically deny the color before the enemy denies the color. Uh, while this seems like a weird strategy and is a relatively slow strategy, it is a relatively safe strategy because if they have a double converter that are both looking to convert yellow into some kind of gem, well, you could beat them out before they ever get the chance to do so. So it has some really interesting uh, implications when it comes to pure color, particularly Guild Wars. And any of them that ever have the same gimmick where they have an empower as well as being able to convert away one of its own colors, it might seem kind of bad because in most instances it is if you're using it in a normal battle. The fact that it converts away one of its colors is kind of bad. However, in the context of Guild Wars, it is actually not horrible. Um, so it has that going for it. Plus it's still standard convert. There's always some kind of option that can end up being used for in some kind of team. As far as Alpina Knight, ends up just dealing some damage to an enemy. Grants all allies random status effect, nothing really too special. Even in the pure faction of the place, you don't bother running it. Uh, as far as Lava Troll, ends up creating a mix of red and brown. Yet another one of those kind of things, not really that useful. As far as Little Johnny Bronze, very situational. However, it can be a pretty funny skull spam troop if you wanted to spend the time doing so. If a map meta ever became a thing, he actually would be used on the team. He creates a bunch of skulls, plus four for every single treasure map. And uh, then ends up having a 20% chance of gaining a treasure map. So if you were to have something like Tread and Treasure Maps, which is pretty much very rare. <laughs> but if you were to go farm all the way to 10 treasure maps by using things that have the ability to spam treasure maps, he would end up creating 48 skulls. Is that really viable? Yes. Will you ever get to that point? Pretty much no. <laughs> so um, if there's ever some kind of map meta that becomes a thing, little Johnny Bronze will actually become good. However, in the current state of the game, it is so situational that it's basically just worse than a standard skull creator of pretty much any other kind, and not really something you're really going to bother using. Uh, not to mention, uh, farming maps is pretty underwhelming in the current state of the game, not just because of Treasure Hunt being an underwhelming game mode, but there's also so many other ways that you can end up getting maps that you tend to have way more than you're ever going to need, realistically. As far as uh, Lord uh, Balinor, ends up dealing some damage to an enemy, and uh, the one below, and is boosted by Farce of Thorns. It's an okay boost ratio for Arena. Beyond that point, you're not really going to be using it for anything. Uh, next, we have ourselves a uh, Lord uh, Andronal, which again is a useless old uh, event troop. Uh, then we have a kind of converting into red troop. There was already another one that ended up doing this. Both of them not too good overall. Uh, as far as Lord Ironbeard, can be good if you can actually get one shots on all the enemy reds. Uh, this used to be used for red guild war defend. Can still be used for red guild war defend if you lack other options. Not a horrible option uh, even to this day. Uh, just kind of give it a half mana start off the dwarf thing and boom for six mana basically gets a one shot an enemy uh, it's only particularly good if you can get a one shot and the later you get into the game the harder it is for it to actually one shot anymore so um, there's that however if you're still at a point where it can one shot it's pretty good to use as far as uh lucifia uh, Lu lucifera uh it is one of the useless um old uh, event troops and just never used as far as Luther, you get this for free from completing out the very first kingdom. Unfortunately, he's not viable anymore. He used to be way back in the day, though, in the current state of the game. Wasting your entire turn just to do an attack buff is pretty underwhelming. No board control, no other follow-up. Doesn't even have an empower. Um, yeah, it doesn't really have much making it viable. It would be kind of cool if they eventually do do gigantic buff to him, given that he's the very first epic you ever get. Would kind of make a pretty good first impression if they ever did. But in the current state of the game, it is very underwhelming, which is rather unfortunate as it's uh, most people's first epic that they ever see. And uh, is a pretty, well, if nothing else, it's a pretty good representation of what epics are. Uh, very underwhelming <laughs> troops that are basically never used, <laughs> with a few exceptions. Uh, epics, uh, oddly enough, are one of the worst categories. Maybe not the worst, but um, 
there's a lot, as you can see, we're skipping over a lot of these. There is a very few good options. If it wasn't for the fact of the fact that, uh, like, some of the controls exist here, and the fact that there's quite a few empowers that are just naturally decent, um, Epics as a typing is just so bad. There's a few really noteworthy exceptions, but uh, there's like 90% useless Epics, pretty much. And Luther's a really good example of what to expect from Epics within the game. So there's that. Until you get to Forest of Thorns, and then it's like, oh, Epics are actually useful. <laughs> because that's when you get Rowan, of course. Uh, as far as uh, Melsadessa, it's another one of these converter things. It has Empower. Obviously, all of these are good. Uh, it just converts yellow to green. Very situational. One of the weaker ones of them. However, it always has at least some amount of vibe ability particularly for guild wars uh double empower meta is very strong right now and uh anything that ends up doing it obviously has some amount of synergy within the game uh this thing is an old uh, useless event troop nothing relevant there uh mantis shrimp ends up dealing some true damage to an enemy and then knocks them to the last position and submerge itself nothing really too relevant pretty underwhelming uh as far as merit uh deals some damage to an enemy flicks around obsess effect and there's a 20 percent chance of gaining treasure map um as like that treasure map synergy there however its ability is just so underwhelming that it doesn't really do much uh, sp uh speaking of underwhelming Here's something that isn't underwhelming, Merlif. So as far as Merlif is concerned, um, it is basically like Thrall and other similar options where it gets a really ridiculously high amount of uh, gem destroy. It also keep poking with true damage as well as gaining some attack. This thing is absurdly good in arena and can still be used outside of arena. However, compared to other similar options, it's a little bit underwhelming. Um, it's not a bad troop by any stretch of the imagination. However, um, there's so many better destroys out there that it tends to not really be used too much just because the other ones tend to be better than it. So even though it is a pretty decent troop, it's outclassed by other similar things. And for that reason, makes it quite a bit used quite a bit less. It does have a fire link going into itself, so going all in on red can get it up pretty quickly. But um, it's just outclassed by quite a few other destroys. It's definitely usable and is still really solid. But compared to Egg Thief, compared to Thrall, compared to other things, it's just underused quite a bit. Just because the other options are better in most situations. So this thing is, is um, oh never mind, I thought this was one of the old event troops. Uh, deal some damage to an enemy, ends up having a little silence thingy over. Overall, you generally only really use this for the faction. There's better ways to apply silence out there. So um, not really used beyond the faction. However, it is integral to actually be able to beat the faction. So at least there's that. As far as uh, Mirror Dawn, ends up dealing some damage to an enemy and boosted by uh, enemy beasts and lycanthropy gems. Overall, pretty bad. However, it can be good in arena and beyond that point will never be used. Actually, one of the more recent troops that came in near the 1000 mark. However, overall, not being really too useful. So, Mercy. Um, this was the very first troop to ever be added to the game that has Empower into a Convert. Um, with this, it actually gives quite a few of effects as well. Uh, they started off very strong with this really meta typing of troop. Uh, they end up giving it a uh, life gain to the weakest ally, which is pretty relevant because we'll auto-target whatever weakest is, which means if you set it to an AI team, it'll guarantee heal whatever the closest to death uh, ally is. Uh, even if they're all at full durability, it will still target whatever has the lowest overall durability, uh, which is, of course, whatever the lowest HP plus armor value is. Uh, do be mindful. If they, something is doing true damage to you, but something else is more damage, it won't specifically hit lowest HP. For example, let's say something has 100 armor and 10 HP. It would not target it if something else had uh, 50 HP. Even though that thing that has 50 HP and zero armor uh, has uh, more HP than the thing that has 10 HP and uh, 100 armor, uh, its overall durability is weaker. So when it's hitting weakest, it will hit the thing that has the lowest durability, which in that case would be the thing with 50 HP. So do be mindful of that. That's the way that every single thing that does weakest does. Um, however, um, it's pretty relevant for her because you actually do want her healing, obviously. But uh, yeah, she's used on defend teams quite often. Can be used on offense on occasion, but it converts all purple to yellow and cleanses all allies. Overall, pretty good. They started very strong with this typing, and uh, kind of makes sense because that typing is just really strong in general. So similar to how they started bad with Luther to kind of uh, give a good example of that most epics will be bad. Uh, they started very strong with Mercy to show that everything that ever has an empower convert is actually very ridiculously viable. And uh, she's a pretty good example of that. And still to this day, despite being the very first one, has one of the strongest uh, side effects to its convert. Uh, though coloration-wise, I feel like it's used a little bit less in the current state of the game compared to some of the other better colorations, like brown to red off of summer and a few other things. But uh, overall, still not horrible. Uh, as far as Metzilli, this thing ends up draining all mana from an enemy. And if there is a storm, uh, death mark them. And then Conjurers a Dark Storm. Overall, nothing really too relevant. There's so many better mana drainers out there that you're basically never really going to be touching the thing. Uh, as far as this thing, this is actually not a useless uh, boss slaying troop. 
Uh, the main reason why this is not useless is it converts all greens to uh, Doom Skulls. There are very few things that actually have a Doom Skull convert uh, currently. I believe there's only like a, a currently about a dozen or so that can convert a gem into uh, Doom Skulls. And this is one of them. So overall, not that bad. It's the same convert that uh, oddly enough Mirage Queen has. So generally using Mirage Queen instead due to the elemental synergy due to the half mana start due to the four times curse. Um, however, uh, this thing can still be viable if you specifically need to kill a boss like a Zugoth on the opposing team and you still want to have like a good damage damage burst follow-up this thing can be pretty good uh, as more bosses come into the game this can actually become increasingly more meta it's also ridiculously broken in arena because it kind of just auto wins once it gets to doom skull convert so um there's that however um yeah it's a good boss lane trip it's not horrible it's one of the few that aren't so mongo it is pure rng i'm not even sure of the full list that it does uh, i covered a video on it like ages back when it first got released like four or five years ago covering every single thing that it does however since then they've added even more things what on earth all those things are i have not the slightest clue i would not bother using this thing it is literally the embodiment of luck and is just so so ridiculously bad <laughs> but um yeah i think there's like 20 or 30 different things that this thing can do it is pretty insane and of them they're not even that good most of them are just like really underwhelming um it's not like one of them's like four times devoured the entire enemy team or something like that <laughs> obviously that'd be pretty broken if it was though it'd be a low enough chance that they could probably get away with it but overall it, it's just way too random even if I had like a double devour or double insta kill, it just wouldn't be worth it because the chance of specifically rolling it just isn't high enough. But um, yeah, it's very underwhelming. It's one of those troops that are just way too luck based to ever be viable. Uh, here's another one of those kind of giant things that hard counter something. This one specifically counters mount monsters. We already had saw the triple damage thing with empower, and generally, if you're going to counter monsters, if you're even going to bother directly doing it at all, you're generally going to be using the thing that has empower and not that thing. Uh, it's the issue that a good majority of those giants have that counter specific typing. They don't have empower to go with it, unlike Gob Trumper, uh, which makes them unviable. Anyways, as far as Moon Rabbit, another one of these really good empower troops. It converts all blue to yellow. This one's pretty meta for quite a few teams, uh, particularly the Divinish Fall Quillen team. Uh, it's probably one of the most noteworthy teams that this ends up getting used for. And um, yeah, pretty useful in that meta. Ends up giving a bunch of life to all other allies, so you don't even need to worry about it hitting the wrong thing, since it will give it to literally everything. And then blesses the first ally, which is pretty relevant because it gets rid of a tangle, gets rid of freeze. So when you're doing a skull spam team with it, it can end up getting quite a bit of uh, follow up onto uh, its ability. As far as Morterra, this is a useless old uh, event. Uh, yeah, it's all a useless old event troop. Uh, nothing to see there. This thing ends up stealing a bunch of Morthani's will, ends up stealing a bunch of uh, armor from an enemy, and then does some true damage. Pretty underwhelming, nothing really too special here. It does have a little bit of mana drain, and uh, ends up gaining half of what it drains. So theoretically, if it drains something that had 22 mana costs, or 22 mana currently or higher, and uh, it would end up getting all of its mana back. However, it is still very underwhelming and just not worth using. As far as the uh, Mort Latch uh, sto uh, sto Stout Beard, Ends up dealing some damage to an enemy and is a useless uh, old event troop. It's also one of those weird jumbles that does not give you an extra turn, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Uh, and all those are pretty bad. Anything that has a jumble that does not do extra turn is basically just a negative effect for yourself for no reason onto a troop. And it has it as if it's a positive on it. Next we have Nax, which is basically just a useless buffer. Uh, as far as Necreza, ends up summoning Do uh, Bone Storm was one of the more uh, earlier dispels as well in the game. Dispels all positive status effects from enemies and then summons random undead. Overall, pretty underwhelming, not something you'd really bother using. Better off just using Azura if you're looking for a dispel. As far as uh, Narita, ends up dealing some damage to an enemy and is an old event troop. And uh, yeah, they're all bad. Uh, almost all bad. As far as Night Hag, ends up uh, either uh, be being pure RNG and being completely useless. It either uh, eliminates half an enemy's attack or eliminates half the enemy's magic. Uh, or transforms an enemy into a giant toadstool. Overall, way too luck based, not something you're ever going to really bother bothering with. As far as Night Slayer, deals some damage to an enemy and is old, useless event troop. Uh, next, we have Nightwing, which uh, ends up being a old, useless event troop. <laughs> Though it does have a yellow purple thingy going for it, but overall, it is an old, useless event troop. <laughs> It's a little bit loopable though, so it has that. It can feed mana back into itself. You can kind of use it as a boss lane option, but uh, overall, it's not that good. Uh, something that can loop a bit better though, Nobin Brothers. It's uh, used in some pure goblin teams. Ends up getting the extra turn, either eliminates a bunch of attack from all enemies, or does a bunch of damage to them, or explodes a bunch of gems. Generally, something this luck base could be bad, or will be bad in most situations. However, similarly to something like Divinia, what every single one of the individual things that it does are pretty decent. So because of that, it's not actually too bad, because one of them gives it pretty much all mana back for your entire team. Uh, another one does some damage to all enemies, which is pretty standard decent. And the other one is a, uh, a viable way to lower the enemy's attack. 
So overall, not that horrible. It's uh, used mostly just on pure um, goblin team. You'd never really see it on anything that isn't a four times goblin team. And even then, uh, other goblins are generally used instead. However, uh, due to its coloration, it tends to occasionally be used as a first slot, as it's a good brown sink for something like Truffle or something similar. So as of that going for, if nothing else. As far as the next one, we have uh, Nosferatu. This was a true damage we were mentioning a little bit while back. Um, it's okay. Nothing really too, too special compared to other true damagers that are generally better. It kind of has that werewolf villager kind of aspect where it just keeps transforming back and forth. And um, that's pretty much this whole gimmick. I believe every form of it also has stealthy, so it can't be targeted directly. And there's at least that going for it. Uh, overall, pretty underwhelming troop that you're never really going to bother using, though. Uh, very situational. As far as the uh, Oakery Jelly, ends up uh, creating a bunch of gems of a uh, of the uh, most used ally uh, color. And... Um, uh, and the ends up creating some skulls. Overall, it does a weird mix and just not really going to going to be that viable. It's just really inconsistent. As far as the Eclarion ends up having a convert onto green or uh, brown to green. Uh, overall, uh, it's not really something you'd bother using in any context outside of Arena or for the Pure Faction. Uh, beyond that, it's not really used. The reason it's actually used in the Pure Faction is to make sure you counter out the enemy's brown to green convert with your own brown to green to convert so they don't get a brown to green convert. Uh, it also has Jinx, but once again, Jinx is not currently meta. Okay, here was one of the um, uh, old event troops that I was kind of looking for. Um, if we ever kind of need a slower, tower slaying troop in a team, this can be a pretty viable one because he's actually pretty good at killing everything else that isn't the tower as well. He deals damage to an enemy and also tears all of their armor. Uh, this is kind of like Mang and other similar things where, you know, it has the full armor tier. It's kind of basically like a Grave Knight that can auto one-shot every tower in the game. So there's that going for it. Um, very situational. There's currently only one player owned tower currently within the game. Um, but overall, um, it can do some pretty decent damage to everything else. Uh, it's basically just like casting a Mang or something similar. Um, it's basically just a better version of Grave Knight, essentially. It has the capability of just killing towers while also being tankier. Uh, overall, might have some kind of implication in the future as far as what it can be used for. Uh, in the current state of the game, pretty underwhelming though. As far as the Panther, ends up dealing a bunch of true damage to an uh, enemy. And there's a 10% chance to kill them, boosted by uh, their armor. Uh, overall, a uh, very gimmicky troop. <laughs> um, because you can end up um, kind of going for the insta-kills. Um, can be a, like a cheaper option to go for insta-kill if you want to. However, there are better ways of going about it that generally would never bother touching this thing. But if you don't have Zugoth, you don't have Iron Gut, you don't have other similar options, can be a way to do so. But beyond that, it's not really something that will be used. And in the context of Arena, I don't even believe it has that much damage, so it doesn't end up working out. It's mostly just used for, like, delving, if you have, like, absolutely nothing else to use. But even by then, you might as well just use Mang with Skull Spam, and you'd probably get better value out of it. It's just a really weird, kind of clunky troop to use. It has no follow-up on its ability, ends its turn. So compared to something like Zugoth, Iron Gut, and similar options, it just doesn't have any way to keep itself sustained. Uh, to keep going. Uh, here's another useless boss troop, as is tradition with them. They're just pretty much all pretty bad. Uh, next, we have a another old event troop. Once again, pretty bad. Uh, Penglong, you get for free from the uh, Shentang Kingdom. Ends up dealing damage to all enemies. Pretty standard, just kind of full AoE. Um, kind of just counts as dragons. There's quite a few dragons that have this kind of mechanic, where you just hit all enemies. Uh, overall, quite a few dragons that have this are pretty useless in the current state of the game. This one's pretty much no different. Even hits less than a Vena and a few other options. Though it does have a boost ratio to kind of fix it a little bit. However, enchants have a little bit of a weird effect, especially since it's one of those few effects that uh, if you have four times enchant and you cast it, it does not count your own in the current state of the game, so it does even less damage. As far as this thing, it just deals some damage, um, and then for each of the uh, skills uh, that it has greater, it ends up stealing some magic. Overall, just really underwhelming. It can work in Arena, but beyond Arena, just not really going to be doing much. Uh, as far as Pride Guard, pretty underwhelming. It's the one of those armor boost ratio ones that just is not viable, especially compared to something like Rowan. Uh, normally, it doesn't even have enough to end up doing a one-shot, so very underwhelming. Not really something you'd bother doing. You need a full team armor buff to even really make it work. And by that point, you might as well just single target armor buff or Rowan or something similar. Uh, Guard's Avatar, just kind of kill that way. It's just not worth using compared to other things that have a armor boost ratio within the game. And is one of the weaker things that have directly a, a armor boost ratio. I would even say it's worse than Paladin in many situations. So overall, pretty bad. As far as Princess Urla, it ends up um, summoning a light storm and then dealing some damage to an enemy. And if the enemy dies, it ends up gaining five attack. Overall, nothing really too special. Just kind of a little poke. Uh, next one we have here is Prince uh, Bar uh, Baroslav. As far as this thing ends up uh, dealing some damage to an enemy, and if it is rage, it deals uh, double damage. And if the enemy is a uh, daemon, it ends up becoming enraged. Overall, nothing too special. Just have half mana start, but not really something you're really going to be using, even in the context of Reyna. Not really that good. Prince Athoris ends up dealing some damage to an enemy, boosted by uh, enemy Fae, and then summons a Silver Draken um, 
or Christinex. If I consistently summoned Christinex, this could be maybe viable. However, the randomness just makes it pretty underwhelming. And its ability isn't really much anyway, so you might as well see if you use a Christine X. And even then, Christine X isn't even particularly meta in the current state of the game. So overall, pretty bad. Prince Elspeth, a very weird situational troop. <coughs> Main gimmick with her is, of course, she has access to Empower. And she ends up creating a lot of gems on turn one. It's kind of like a siren, except even more. However, it gets to kill one of your allies and then summons them into a random knight. Uh, there's a few weird gimmicks that you can end up doing with this. For one, that actually counts as a summon, so you kind of keep doing it over and over again. However, um, I don't know. It, it's just a really weird gimmicky kind of burst first turn kind of uh, uh, troop. Where you kind of have to sacrifice something on your team in order to uh, do so. Compared to Leprechaun and other similar options, it's just way more consistent than what Elspeth can ever do. And for the most part, you're not really going to be using it. There's a few weird gimmicks you can do, but overall, it's just not really worth using. Prince Fizzbang was ridiculously broken the second it came out because it actually, instead of having either or, actually did both of its two effects. However, in the current state of the game, due to the either or, it is basically completely useless. And uh, the only time you might ever really see it is in a pure goblin team. But even in the current state of the game, there's so many more goblins that got added that it basically isn't even used for that anymore. So unfortunately, nothing really too special. As far as the Pyagra, this thing basically summons more of itself. Nothing really too special here. It's basically a useless troop that summons more of the useless troop. Quite a few troops that are like that, and that is one of them. As far as the Pyrahydra, ends up doing some scatter damage boosted by burning enemies, and then burns a bunch of random enemies. Does have a okay boost ratio for something like Arena. So if you're looking to do it with Arena, a bunch of burns are really strong, and then the scatter kind of just clears out the rest of the team. Outside the context of Arena or super early on in the game, you're basically never really going to be touching it, though. Um, so this thing ends up uh, dealing some light splash damage to an enemy, and if they and a uh, random enemy and if the enemy is a construct ends up exploding a bunch of gems this is pretty useless compared to the exact same thing of the exact same color of the uh, obsidian golem where you can basically just one shot the construct instead so this troop is basically completely useless it's the same exact color pretty similar traits there's really no point in using this instead of just one shotting the construct uh, with the other troop so overall pretty underwhelming uh, not to mention you're barely countering constructs in the current state of the game anyways though there are a few instances where it does come into play and in those instances, you would use the Obsidious Golem and not bother with this thing. Another instance of something being lower rarity being way better than the higher rarity thing, that is for sure. Uh, this thing is pretty useless. It does have a 50% chance to summon Queen Isabel. However, otherwise, it's basically just a useless old uh, uh, vent troop that just isn't used. This thing steals up to 50 gold from the enemy, which unfortunately is not the full amount. However, it's still a pretty substantial amount. And then deals some damage to an enemy, boosted by stolen gold at a 1 to 1. Uh, overall, it can be okay in things like Arena and stuff on occasion. Uh, not really something you're really going to be bothering to use otherwise. You're better off just using um, um, Bronzok, uh, not Bronzok Pistol, though Bronzok Pistol would work. But the red blue that ends up doing it based on the gold boost ratio that we just went over. Uh, actually, I actually already forgot her name, but uh, just, I don't use her much just because uh, there's other better options like Tesla. But um, yeah, there's just it's just not really usable. Um, pretty much everything that kind of has a similar mechanic to this generally isn't really too good. It's hard to make the enemy specifically get a lot of gold unless you're doing a really specific gold farming team. And even then, there's just better things that can eliminate all gold that will just do it way more effective. And it's just not worth using overall. As far as Ragnagord, um, he's a really old troop. Uh, the second event troop that ever came into the game. He just explodes a bunch of gems of a chosen color. Overall, pretty underwhelming in the current state of the game. However, he does have half mana start, so he can do it for seven mana. However, when you compare it to Leprechaun, why just not use Leprechaun instead? Uh, as far as Raven, uh, he has an interesting gimmick where he gets most of his mana back, all but one, which is really unfortunate that it's not all of his mana. But he gets a good majority of his uh, mana back whenever he ends up getting a kill, and he also ends up gaining an automatic extra turn. Uh, there's a couple weird gimmicks that you can do where basically once you have the enemy down to whatever his base value is and you have some way to kind of loop a little bit of mana on your team, you basically just one shot, one shot, one shot, one shot, one shot, and then just wipe it out based on what his base value is. However, the fact that he gains one less than full mana is extremely annoying. I really wish it was just a full amount of mana. Or if they made a mythic that kind of had more of a raven-like premise, but did do the full amount of mana, but have a lot of potential within the game. Oh, you do get them for free from Mr. Scales, though generally isn't really worth using in most situations. Really good in Arena, though, if nothing else. And there's some weird gimmicky teams that can kind of use it that's kind of fun, but overall not really worth um, going out of your way for. Speaking of that, this is just a useless... Uh, actually, this one is not useless. So it gains uh, two mana boosted by its gold. This is one of those ones that basically can keep casting forever. Um, it is um, a, a tower related one, so you can't use it like the other one where you could just uh, one shot the bosses over and over again. However, this is mostly usable in Arena, where you basically get to the point where it gets all of its mana guarantee and then you just keep spamming it every single turn. 
Uh, this can be used outside of arena, of course, too. However, it is relatively slow um, compared to uh, within arena. But uh, basically, you get it to a certain point, and every single time, it just keeps getting full mana. And you can basically cast it forever, assuming the enemy does not have a mana drain once you get it to that point. So there's that gimmick to it. Overall, not really too useful, though. As far as Red Thorn, speaking about things that aren't useful, just a little bit of splash damage into an enemy boosted by tangled uh, enemies. It's not really something you're going to bother building around. It's really underwhelming. Uh, next, we have the Rhinogore. Quite another uh, pretty underwhelming troop. Does some splash damage to an enemy. And if the enemy dies, it gains uh, 12 mana back. So basically, if you can get a kill, it will get all of its mana reset. Kind of similar to that other troop we were talking about earlier that kills bosses. However, the one that kills bosses has the benefit of actually, um, you know, killing bosses in one shot. Whereas this thing does not have that benefit. So it's basically just a weaker version of that one raid troop, essentially. Which feels weird to say. <laughs> it's a weaker version of the raid troop. Normally it's the other way around, but um, yes, it's basically just weaker than the one raid troop that can one-shot the bosses while also gaining all of its mana back. Um, speaking of good trolls, uh, Rock Troll, pretty decent, ends up doubling all of the uh, browns. Um, pretty standard, just kind of troll kind of thing. It was also, I believe, the first stunner in the game, or one of the first, when it first came out, so that's the thing. But um, yeah, it ends up doing stun there, ends up having some score reduction, pretty cool. So, we finally reached it, one of the few not useless epics. So, Rowan. Uh, arguably top 10 best troop in the entire game. Uh, this thing is very insane. What's even more insane, you get it completely for free from Vars of Thorns completion. It is ridiculously good. About four or five years ago, they give it a boost ratio up to two times. It used to be a one times boost ratio, but ever since it's been a two times boost ratio, it has been decent. Though in the last few years, particularly when medals came out about two years ago, it ends up getting spiked uh, very, very high with how viable it ends up being. Uh, the main reason for this is um, uh, metals. Uh, metals uh, now allow it to have 24 additional armor at the start, which is 48 additional damage. 48 additional damage, even later in the game, uh, where the, with how you run it, is actually pretty substantial. Generally, the way that you run Rowan is you run it against lower level content, so like Quick Kill Explorer and the such, where basically you just use it, instantly kill out the enemy team, and move on to the next battle. It is one of the quickest ways to kill in the entire game, winning at about 4 wins per minute. Uh, it's not the quickest thing in the uh, game, though. Dust Devil into the Iron Hawk is, uh, though that requires owning a uh, Mythic or two, or particularly two if you want the really consistent method. However, uh, Rowan is a great alternative for quick killing when you don't have the super expensive options because you literally get her for free. She can carry you through the entire game. You can literally do the entire quest line the second you get far, uh, you can get Rowan. You can just end up using her and just kind of win everything. Uh, she's absolutely insane. Keep her very protected and just keep casting her and you will win through the entire game pretty much. Um, you can get her Skia shield picked up as well from uh, the Sentinel Hero class, which you obtain from her Skia. Get 250 wins on that and you just boost that into her and that not only gives her barrier, but will also end up giving her a substantial amount of armor that boosts based on the enemy stats. So you can even upscale her through the entirety of factions. Overall, there's almost nothing Rowan does not do. She is hard countered by Submerge, but beyond that, it, it does basically everything you'd ever need to do. Uh, it's also pretty hard countered by Armor Tier, though her directly getting Armor Tier isn't extremely common. Though, of course, something that can happen. But um, yeah, one of the strongest troops in the entire game. And it just happens to be an epic, which is very weird because it does not fit with the rest of the other epics with how bad they are. <laughs> as far as this thing, it's just a useless old event troop. Nothing really to mention here. Next up, we have a Salamander. Just does some damage to an enemy and burns them. Pretty underwhelming. Uh, even in Arena, it's generally not even drafted. It's just a really underwhelming thing to see underneath your epic. As far as the Saguina, ends up stealing some life from an enemy, boosted by uh, purple uh, allies and, and enemies. Nothing really too special. Just a bit of a mana drainer. There's a billion of them, but stronger than it. Uh, as far as Scarab Knight, ends up uh, gaining barrier and a bunch of armor. And then there's an independent 25% chance to, uh, boosted by uh, brown gems to gain an extra turn and half its mana back. It's basically just a kind of standard tank, mostly just used for faction and no other purpose. And even within that faction, you're generally just going to be spamming B tricks anyway, so not really worth using. As far as Scarlet, it deals some damage to an enemy, and if the enemy is a beast, it ends up dealing triple damage. It's one of those kind of uh, specific type uh, counters where there's triple damage against typing while also doing double all of its goals. Uh, overall, given that it doesn't have empower or anything else, not too uh, useful. However, beasts are used quite a bit more than quite a few of these other strong counters, if nothing else. And by strong counters, I mean, you know, concentrated damage. They're not actually good. <laughs> there's a difference between it being strong at countering something and it actually being good at countering something. Uh, it has a strong hit, but it's generally not even enough to one shot later in the game, like many other things that have the triple damage. Um, I wish it was just like auto kill. <laughs> if it was auto kill, that'd fix a lot of issues. And even then, it still wouldn't be viable on all the things that do it. Uh, but anyway, Scarvy Sea Dog, pretty standard uh, power converter. Really commonly used with Zugoff, however, there are a few others that it can be used with. 
Uh, it's just a green to blue while also giving a bunch of gold. Uh, it's also a way just to get free gold, kind of like Leprechaun, but different. Uh, sea Troll, it's just kind of doubling, specifically for blue. It's not horrible. I don't feel like it's used too much, but um, it's one to troll, so it has some amount of usage. Uh, this is one to single color trolls. This thing ends up creating a bunch of blue and browns, merges, and then enrages uh, a ally and gives a bunch of uh, life. Overall, nothing too good. You mostly just use it for Sea of Sorrows. Pure faction, that's basically it. Outside that context, it's just generally not too viable compared to other options. This thing ends up destroying a 3x3 block and then gives a bunch of attack to all allies above uh, above it. And then um, gives 3 magic to all allies below. Overall, it doesn't really do too much and just not really something that you're going to be bothering uh, using. Uh, next up on our list of mini epics, we have the uh, Sanida, one of the several cactuses. It just deals some true damage to the last enemy and then enrages them. Uh, mostly enrages them, so it has synergy with a couple other things. However, it's pretty bad. You're literally just giving the enemy an enrage and just doing a true damage poke that isn't even that good. As far as Sir uh, Gwyn... Oh, gosh, that name. Seguina? Uh, as far as this ability, ends up deal, uh, getting a bunch of life and armor and just deals a ridiculously small amount of damage to an enemy. It doesn't even scale, only 8 damage static. Even in Arena, it seems pretty bad. Overall, just nothing really special. As far as Shade of Karandera, it is the weakest form of the Karanderas. It still uh, ends up doing a somewhat similar ability, though. Though way, way weaker. Deals damage to an enemy, boosted by Doom Skulls, and then Conjures uh, Doom Storm. Conjures Do Doom Storm. Uh, it's one of the cheapest ways, if not the cheapest way, to get a Doom Storm other than specifically off a hero class. Um, so there's that going for it. However, just not really worth it. It doesn't have to convert like the other better Karanderas do. And overall, it's just a way inferior version of the Karen Dares. Uh, Shadow Hunter has a big boost ratio based on life. It normally can one shot with its first cast. Biggest issue with it is every cast subsequent to it is not really doing much. Basically, meaning that after a cast, you basically just made a 4 versus 4 into a 3 versus 3, because this troop basically doesn't exist after its first cast. It still can do some damage, but it's substantially lower. And overall, it's generally not really worth using, because you're basically just making the battle a 3 versus 3 rather than a 4 versus 4, uh, which doesn't really help too much in most situations. So overall, very situational. Can be okay in Arena and a couple other things like that, but um, just generally not worth using otherwise. Uh, Shaman of Seth ends up uh, choosing a color and then creates a bunch of red gems equal to the number of uh, gems uh, of that color and then flicks bleed to a random enemy. Overall, it doesn't really end up doing too much. Can be a little bit of a red mana accumulator, but beyond that point, uh, just better mana accumulators out there. Plus, it doesn't feed mana back into itself. As far as this thing, it is a useless old event troop, just not really worth using. And it's pretty much just a skip. As far as uh, Shimmer Scale ends up... Um, converting uh, brown to red so it does have to convert there and deal some damage to an enemy boosted by gems converted overall nothing really too good has some pretty interesting art though but um overall it's actual capabilities it's not really much it's just basically a convert and other things can just do it better as far as shocktopus this was actually the community made um troop from a while back a couple years back um there basically there was a bunch of voting on a bunch of stuff obviously we couldn't make it too strong however uh this was the end result of a bunch of polling and this is basically what the troop ended up becoming uh overall it's pretty underwhelming in the current state of the game uh, ends up destroying some gems of a chosen color and then deals some true damage for uh each enemy of that color uh it's one of those really annoying select a color things uh there's basically a mythic that does this way better now the gray king the Great King is essentially just a superior version of this that is substantially better that basically makes this obsolete. <laughs> it has quite a bit of a higher mana cost and also uses a completely different color compared to Shocktopus. However, it is just so much better than this thing by magnitudes that uh, this thing is basically never used in comparison. Uh, as far as next, we have the uh, Sifu. Sifu is uh, one of those old uh, troops that just isn't worth it from the events. Just, just don't use it. Uh, this thing creates a bunch of red and yellow, deals some damage and the first um, to the first uh, enemy, and then burns them. Overall, not really too good, though it does have that little bit of mix of uh, mana accumulation with a little bit of poking, though compared to other options within the game, it's just not worth using. Sir uh, Eppenheart uh, ends up being one of those old uh, vent troops that just isn't worth using. Sir Gwain, uh, really interesting, has a guarantee 1 to 3 uh, summon while also creating a bunch of blue and brown. Uh, a lot of these uh, converts are like this, or you know, the double gem creation of this kind of amount generally aren't too good. He is one of those rare exceptions as he is a really heavy um, summoner spammer. Um, there are some very rare situations where you bring him out. For the most part, not really worth using. However, um, it's very niche if you'd uh, want to have like really high consistent mass summons. Uh, he's one of the most consistent mass summoners in the entire game. So he has that going for it. Though he's by far not the best just because he doesn't feed back into himself. But um, a really gimmicky troop. Very situational overall. Generally useless. As far as this thing, uh, speaking of about useless, it's just an old event troop. One thing that's even more hilarious is every single tower, even the player owned tower, has immune to mana drain. So it does additional damage to towers, yet... Uh, does a mana drain yet yeah, every single tower that exists in the entire game both player owned and non-player owned has immune to this 
So it is so weird. Why makes them so bad? <laughs> but anyways. Uh, too bad it doesn't drain all of them, but even then against towers, it'd still be bad. But anyways, uh, as far as Sturr's not helm, ends up dealing some damage to an enemy and then uh, webs and entangles them, gains an extra turn. Uh, very situational, however, it can be a good way to disable because if they're webbed, they have zero magic, and if they're entangled, they have zero attack. So that's a thing, however, um, drone is not as good compared to other options within the game. However, it is a utility purpose that can kind of be used, though do keep in mind something having zero magic does not mean they can't cast, unlike Silence. Um, they can still cast, they just have zero magic to whatever their purple value is within their ability, or purple values if it's multiple. And that doesn't even necessarily mean zero, because they could still have a base value, like this thing has a base value of four, so still would end up having some amount of value. Like if this thing ends up webbing itself, it would still have a base value of three, so it still does something. Plus, even if it was webbed, it would still do the uh, extra turn, it would still do the entangle, it would still do the web itself. It just specifically makes the magic value go down. Anyways, uh, other than that, uh, we have this useless thing. It's just another one of the useless ones for the pile. Old raid event troops that are just useless. Uh, this thing ends up um, dealing some damage to the first enemy. And then, um, oh, sorry, the first and last enemies. And uh, either uh, enemy uses, if either of them uses blue mana, it deals double damage. And if either enemy uses uh, purple mana, it will barrier itself. Uh, very situational troop, but not really something you'd bother using unless the enemy team is using a lot of blue purple. And even in that situation, compared to other options, why not just use those other options? Uh, just so weird with all the conditions that it has that um, you're generally not going to be using it. Skelleros. So this is one of the um, kind of troll-like troops that isn't actually a troll. It uh, doubles the number of skulls and then only does two additional, whereas all the other ones do three additional. Overall, um, it'd almost seem like this thing could potentially be good. Uh, however, there's pretty much never been a viable build for this thing for the most part. Um, seems like something that kind of should be a bit viable. However, there just isn't really a way to make it work. My uh, biggest issue, of course, generally being that skulls themselves don't directly mana accumulate anything for you. So to be able to double them compared to just doubling a color that can potentially loop forever, like far straw to truffle, just isn't really worth it compared to those other options. So uh, for the most part, this isn't really used due to that and just other options basically covering it better. Um, and there's other skull spammers that have double converts and other things that not only create the skulls, but also man accumulate that pretty much does outclass it. As far as the Skymer, this thing uh, has a way to move things to uh, first slot, oddly enough. It cleanses and barriers and ally, uh, gives them a bunch of durability, and then moves them to the front. This is basically a buffing troop that isn't completely useless. It's super situational when you would use it, though, and generally isn't worth using compared to other options. However, it's one of the few rear buffers that isn't completely useless. As far as Snow Hunter, it ends up dealing some damage to an enemy. Hunters mark them, triple if their hunters marked, one of those kind of gimmicks again. Uh, overall, not really too useful. Can be a little bit hard for it to actually end up landing, even a single triple, and even then it's generally not enough to kill. Uh, Spark Grinders is a useless buffer, even if for a mech, it's just useless. This thing deals a bunch of damage to all enemies and then webs a random enemy. Uh, overall, nothing really too special here. Even if it was a four times web, that still wouldn't really be used, so overall, nothing really too interesting. Spring Emissary ends up uh, giving some, um, oh, it's a useless buffer. Uh, nothing to see here. Uh, next, we have a uh, statue of uh, St. Veritas. This is an old event troop. Nothing to see here again, though it does gain barrier, if nothing else. Uh, does it hit for boss or tower? Tower, okay, that's less viable. And even then, the hit for boss, obviously, uh, a little bit better synergy. Uh, mostly because um, there's currently only one tower player owned troop, but there are four boss player owned troops, and it definitely seems like we're going to get way more bosses than we are going to get towers, that's for sure. Uh, though it does seem like we're probably going to get more towers at some point uh, from a campaign in the future. But, anyways. As far as this next troop, another useless um, uh, old event troop, just not worth using. Uh, Stone Shaker, once again, another old event troop. This is why we're skipping them. There's so many of them. Uh, next, we have uh, Transform, a selected uh, mana color to blue, and then summons a random storm. Unfortunately, no empower there, so that basically just lost any value that it could have had. Uh, something that does have pretty good value, though. String Fiddler ends up having a uh, green storm at start of battle, which has some pretty good synergy with goblin teams. Ends up silencing an enemy and then exploding a bunch of gems of their mana color while also doing an extra turn. Overall, pretty good value. It was actually a bit stronger when it came out and was almost immediately nerfed. Uh, even after that nerf, it is still pretty decent for pure goblin team, so there's that going for it. As far as the Strigic, there's a bunch of scatter damage boosted by yellow gems. Uh, it can be okay in arena, but even then, it's kind of pretty useless. Overall, not really something you'd bother using. Sunweaver is basically a useless buffer. It does have a little bit of mana gain on it, distinguishing it a little bit. However, overall, still pretty bad. Um, Swamp Lash, uh, they actually got rid of his Impervious a long while back, like five, six years ago. Not sure why, there was really no reason to do so. Even if it's still had Impervious to this day, it'd still be a pretty underwhelming option, just does some damage. It's one of those similar plants. There's quite a few plants where it's kind of dependent on like the whole entangle mechanic, yet it doesn't really end up doing it too well compared to other things within the game, and pretty much all those plants are similar to it. 
It's kind of useless, and Swamp Lash is no different. As far as uh, Swan May, uh, this thing ends up uh, gaining a bunch of uh, mana to all other allies for each Lincothropy gem on the board. This is ridiculously situational on if you actually had a billion Lincothropy gems on the board. And even if you did, you could probably just claim it for a bunch of purple mana rather than having to use this thing. It also ends up converting all uh, yellow gems to skulls. However, given that you can end up doing uh, similar off of the um, Hatter and Scroll and similar troops, there's really no point in using this thing. So I'm not sure why they even bothered adding it during that season, since the Mythics basically just do it way better and it has way too high of a mana cost to even bother of using. As far as the what on earth is that word, uh, ends up dealing damage to all enemies and then freezes one to four random enemies. It's uh, one of those dragons that is slightly less useless, however, still pretty useless. Um, Most of the AoE dragons, pretty underwhelming in the current state of the game. Uh, Savasi, uh, uh, fun fact, very first event trip that ever happened came into the game. Um, it was the very, very first, all the way back in 2014 at the end of the year. Um, so, yeah, this was a thing. Uh, actually, events that when it first came out weren't even giving new troops. This was the very first one that came in, and it came in with Savasi Blades, which unfortunately is a old uh, Fidar weapon now. Uh, was free when it first came in, or, you know, a little bit of glory, which is basically free in game currency. But, uh, anyways, as far as the troop, hasn't aged too well. It was reworked once, I believe. However, it steals some attack from an enemy and then transforms all blue gems to uh, purple to boost the effect. Basically, Wild Queen is just a superior version, and that's basically it. Just use Wild Queen. Um, it's from the same kingdom anyways. They're both from uh, Pan's Vale. Which, oddly enough, this video should still be going out during that week, so um, you can actually get it in the event queue drop table <laughs> if you want to go get Savasi. Though pretty underwhelming, I wouldn't really bother. Anyways, uh, Tapon is basically just a weaker version of Summer, um, but that also has a brown to uh, red convert. Uh, this thing does literally the same thing, except with a worse side effect. Instead of creating a red storm, it just poisons a random enemy. Overall, it's basically weaker than it in every possible way, and is basically obsolete compared to it now. Uh, Tal Ray is uh, one of those kind of double damage troops if it webs him, and it does double if they are already webbed. Um, there's qu quite a few troops that are like that. All of them are pretty useless. Tankbot ends up stealing a bunch of armor from an enemy, and then deals some true damage. Overall, pretty underwhelming. Nothing really too special there. Uh, as far as the Tarntazel, uh, it's an old event troop that is just useless, so that's the thing. Uh, Tessarian, um, kind of interesting, he's a one-time use only, he creates a bunch of gems of a chosen color, and he gives some bunch of magic to all allies. If that magic was based on like half his magic, this could probably actually be viable. Uh, the biggest issue is that's not enough magic to really justify using him, especially for 18 mana cost. However, we can get quite a bit of uh, mana going and stuff like that, however, if this magic was ever to be buffed, uh, this could potentially be good, especially if the magic gain was based on his full amount of magic, between the fact that he's arcane and everything, he could actually become viable at some point. In the current state of the game, it's pretty underwhelming though, and not really something you would use compared to the many other mana accumulators. So here is one instance of Empower where it is actually a bad troop. This is arguably the only Empower in the entire game that is useless. As far as tall, it deals some damage to an enemy, and for whatever reason, when it dies, it gains forward all skills. This makes absolutely no sense because it's Empower, and when would you ever be able to actually get a kill off of this? Uh, unless you're doing like a ridiculously weak battle. His ability just doesn't make any sense. He used to be able to remove all red or destroy all red, I can't remember, but he did something with red um, back in the day while also gaining attack. And that ability would have been stronger than what he currently has, especially off of Empower, because you could actually, you know, remove red out of the starting board and kind of get value there. I'm not sure why they changed it to ability or why they gave it Empower or why he's so useless and why he's still so useless. It's one of those kingdom epics, but similar to, uh, um, actually, then again, I was going to say as yeah, kind of similar to Lady Sapphira. But, um, no, Lady Sapphira was actually meta. T Tall was never good. <laughs> and uh, then they made him worse somehow, which is kind of funny. Because literally the exact time when Guild Wars ended up coming out was when they got rid of his convert to red. Which would have made him, like, it, he was always kind of weak. And then they decided to make him even weaker when the, his previous ability would actually finally have been, like, not half bad. Which is kind of funny. Uh, as far as uh, this troop is just a tower killing troop, you'd never use it for anything else. It's just a standard old useless event troop. Uh, from the past. As far as Taraxxus, uh, not horrible. Deals some full AoE damage, can transform blue to brown, can get some value here and there. Overall, not too good compared to other options. However, there are some situations where it can be used, particularly Arena. Uh, as far as uh, Teska, uh, ends up getting some life and attack to an ally uh, as a useless buffer, and that's all you need to know. As far as uh, Thamaris, ends up um, dealing some damage to an enemy. Oh, it's an old event troop, though it does have a little bit of explosion. Um, so, has that going for it, but overall, pretty bad. 
Uh, next we have, uh, actually this troop came out this week <laughs> because I recorded this video uh, on the Monday before I left. Uh, this one actually got into the uh, cycle, which is kind of funny. This is the most recent one from the uh, current event week that we have going on right now. If you want to get it, it's in glory. I would not advise it. It's basically just a weaker version of Wild Queen. Anyways, uh, as far as Silver Maiden, uh, it's basically a self-buffer that has a little bit of tank ability. There's better tanks out there, not really worth using. Uh, useless buffer, never use. Uh, okay, so Toad Squeezer. Here is one of the other few that is good and if you're looking for a tower killer other than the one that has the armor tier capability this is the other one that's pretty decent uh this is actually so decent that it is used uh, just entirely for its side effects in pure goblin teams um for two reasons one is it has impervious which is really good i believe it's the only goblin in the game that has impervious which is pretty relevant and it has some additional stuff on its ability unfortunately it's rng based stuff however it's not bad it ends up doing uh, gain an extra turn, which I mentioned. Obviously, all goblins do that. And uh, then it either explodes four gems, which is good, or enchants all other allies, which is good. So either way, it's going to guarantee do mana accumulation. So even though it's locked base, you still know for sure it will be doing something mana accumulation related. So it has that going for it. Uh, overall, it's mostly only used in pure goblin teams. can be used as a tower counter, obviously. If towers ever became super meta, maybe the pure goblin team with it would end up becoming more meta. It's already pretty decent to begin with, though, that team. Uh, mostly because it's impervious energy there. Overall, um, yeah, it's a good tower slaying troop. And um, if towers ever become a little bit better, can start getting more usage. Outside of even just the goblin team, it could just be plopped into other teams as well. Uh, since it still man accumulates, of course. So overall, finally, one that isn't too useless. Uh, there's a few of them, and that is one of them. That thing, the thing with the armor tier and the thing that can keep casting. Uh, and as well as the one that has the extra automatic turn, the other goblin one. That can specifically hit raid troops. Or, you know, bosses, I mean. Uh, anyways, um, as far as uh, Tome Robber, ends up creating a bunch of skulls. And it's boosted by gold. Overall, not the greatest, however. It's an okay skull spammer. Because once you get that gold, you can just keep doing it over and over again. Assuming the enemy doesn't end up countering it out. Uh, next up, we have Tome Spider. Overall, pretty underwhelming. There's some things that can summon off 100% chance anyway. So you're generally not going to be starting with this. If you're going to have it on your team, it's generally going to get summoned off of something. So, Tulio. This thing is very situationally really good. Um, compared to Leprechaun, it's normally outclassed by Leprechaun in most situations. However, it is unique enough to be usable outside of just Leprechaun. So, it uses the colors of green and yellow. This is pretty relevant because it gets to choose a color and then enchants all allies of that color. And then gives them six uh, mana to them, boosted by gems of that color. Uh, one thing that's relevant about this is if you hit the color that it uses, which is green and yellow, it will end up doing this effect to itself as well. So on some pure green teams and some pure yellow teams, this can be a viable option for gaining a lot of mana. The main gimmick that this thing can do that is actually pretty strong and mostly unique to this, there are a few other things that can do it. However, this is, I believe, currently the most viable thing in the game for doing it. It can feed mana to things that are completely blocked on mana. Um, there are a few other options that could do this, so this is a really uh, viable way of doing so. So, for example, let's say we're doing a team that has two catchers of bulls on it, and uh, we're half mana starting them with the hero class, so they only need 11 mana cost. Well, in one single turn, um, she could basically just go give them full mana, because you'll end up getting, uh, if you target something that has at least uh, 12, like the green, if the green has at least 12 on the board, she'll end up doing uh, the um, 9 mana for it, and then you end up getting the enchant, and then boom, you got the last 11 mana you needed in order to get it all the way to max. So there are a few instances where it can kind of be good when it's like full blocked and you want to feed mana to something. Uh, overall, very situational. 95% of the time, you're just going to go something like an Opercon or something similar. However, there are some really niche niche situations where it can work on a pure green or a pure yellow team. And one thing to mention too is uh, this video is still coming out during Tower of Doom. So hey, it's green Tower of Doom right now. Want to miss with Tulio? It's viable. Speaking of green things, uh, Turtle Cannon uh, explodes a bunch of greens, or sorry, explodes a gem and then creates a bunch of green uh, boosted by skulls. Um, it's basically a weaker version of Forest Troll. Um, it's basically a Forest Troll alternative until you own Forest Troll. Otherwise, you basically never use it again. Uh, as far as Tusk Score, it's uh, pretty useless. It's just an old event trip. You never bother touching it. Uh, as far as this other thing, it curses and death marks uh, the strongest enemy and then destroys a bunch of gems of their mana color. Unfortunately, it's a single gem destroy, uh, meaning if there's, uh, even though it has 35 destroy, if it's like 10 red, it's still only cap at 10. It's unlike the other destroys, we'll end up doing a bunch of mana, so overall pretty weak. As far as uh, Tyrant and Rex, it is a uh, old event troop, and for that reason, is pretty bad. 
Like, a good majority of them. As far as Tyree, used to be quite a bit better. Um, has a gem destroy, however, once again, it is restricted to only a single color. And every single one of these that are restricted to a single color, way weaker than the other ones. Uh, it's a way to kind of farm treasure maps, however, as I mentioned already before. Um, farming treasure maps isn't really that useful in the current state of the game, which makes her kind of useless. She's obtained for free from Zolkari. Uh, compared to other destroys, it's just not worth using. Next up here, we have some deals some damage to an enemy. And if they are webbed, 25% um, or 20% chance to uh, devour them. Overall, nothing really too good here. There's much better devours within the game. Seems really underwhelming for an epic. Not sure why the percents are so low. Uh, as far as the oof there... And this thing is a uh, old event trip that you're never going to use. Uh, what a shocker. I am so surprised. Uh, guess what? This is the exact same thing. However, it does have the potential to silence quite a few things. So at least it has that going for it. However, there's better silences out there. Um, however, I guess there's some value in killing a boss and get adjacent silence. So generally speaking, there's better boss slayers that we've already kind of went over. Uh, this thing just deals some damage. And if the enemy is a daemon, ends up dealing double. And if the enemy dies, it gains some life to a random ally. Overall, pretty underwhelming. Even in arena, you don't really bother with it. It's just not good enough. As far as Van Kane, it is a... Uh, oh, no, it is an old adventure. But it just deals some damage to an enemy and is boosted by all undead uh, uh, enemies. If the enemy is undead, there are uh, independent 50% chance to curse and silence. Overall, pretty underwhelming. You're not really going to be using it. Generally, the ones I forget about are the ones that are completely useless. <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, this thing is completely useless. This is an uh, old adventure, not really something you use. Ben Barrack is one of those dragons I was talking about earlier, just not really that useful. And um, it's just way too RNG based. And even if it did it at 100% chance, it still wouldn't be viable. Uh, Visk, you get for free from Dragon's Claw Kingdom, uh, suffers the problem of many dragons in that they are just very underwhelming in the current state of the game. Has a bit of a double poke, uh, can be okay in Arena, but beyond that point, not really going to be used. Uh, Vlad the Unsteaded, speaking about Arena runs, gosh, this thing can get really insane in Arena. You end up getting a nice uh, life steal from it, and it's boosted by its life, so you end up boost ratio and getting some pretty crazy damage as far as uh, what you can end up um, getting out of value from it. But uh, overall, uh, not really used outside of it. Uh, can kind of stack a little bit if you really want to build some kind of weird build outside of arena however uh, for the most part it's uh, really underwhelming and not something you're really going to be um, end up using next up on our list uh, we're almost there for the end of epics gosh i'm pretty sure epics have like the highest amount but as far as uh, Volthrenix ends up exploding a gem and then uh, dealing damage to uh, all enemies, boosted by Yellow Gem Destroyed, this thing is insanely good how much damage it can end up getting in uh, Arena. But uh, outside that context, it's still pretty underwhelming uh, AoE compared to like Queen of Tanya and other similar options. Just I keep mentioning her a lot, but it's really viable. But um, yeah, it's similar to many other dragons, just as underwhelming in the current state of the game. Uh, you'd run it for Arena as a really solid pick. Beyond that, you wouldn't really bother using it though. This thing's an old event troop. You never bother using it. It's just way too weak and just not really worth ever um, bringing out. As far as Wall of Tentacles, it's one of the weirder uh, walls. This is kind of like the Fortress Gate-like troops where, um, you know, they're kind of just really tanky. They have zero attack, which you can tell by the fact that we have the 40 on them, um, which, of course, isn't zero, but that's just all of our bonuses applying to it. Uh, basically, it just gives a bunch of uh, magic and mana to all other allies. As far as the Gate-like troops, it's definitely not the best, so it's far from the worst. Uh, you can kind of do it to stack a bunch of magic and use three of them on a team and you know kind of just stack a bunch of magic over and over again it's a pretty slow rate of stacking magic though since it's only two per cast so the later you get into the game the less viable it really is however it's a fun gimmick if nothing else though having three of them earlier on in the game can be a little bit hard because it's a random epic so unless you're opening key event keys from Karakaroff it is very unlikely you have three laying around very early on when it might actually be viable and beyond that point it's just not that viable unless you're just picking it up for an arena run uh, next up, we have the uh, Wardrock. As far as this thing, it is a uh, deal some damage to the uh, first enemy and is boosted by their attack. If an enemy is in rage, um, it bleeds uh, the first enemy twice. Overall, pretty bad. Wish they would add even like a four times bleed stack more often. Uh, the fact that they only do like one or two uh, in many situations with a condition just really underwhelming. Um, because, of course, once you get a stack to 10 or uh, to four, it'll do 10 true damage per turn, which can be pretty useful. But all the smaller stacks just don't really do enough damage to uh, justify them normally. As far as Warder Elemental, uh, deals some full AoE damage while also stunning. Can be a cheaper or stun alternative. However, you can also just do the stunning golem and do it off of that instead. So overall, not really too useful compared to that, especially since it has no board control. So overall, generally isn't really used. Uh, next up, we have ourselves the uh, Wave Rider. Ends up um, giving a bunch of buff and it's just a useless buffer. Just nothing there. Uh, next, we have a useless um, uh, old event troop. Nothing there either. Uh, Weir Bat ends up um, doing some uh, uh, steal and some life, which means it does accumulate it and deals true damage to the enemy. 
and then it also inflicts them with death mark on a uh, random enemy uh, for each lincanthropy gem on the board so overall uh, nothing really too special it's kind of like that you know lincanthropy kind of gimmick thing with it uh, overall just not really worth using and you won't have that trait when you're doing an arena so it's going to be even uh, weaker in those situations uh where cats it's uh, another one of those ones that has the whole torgon thing uh or torburn i mean as far as transforming into it it can get a little bit of value if you can actually get its condition it has a triple damage um when there's 13 plus red also gets to create a bunch of red when it ends up doing so eight of them um, and uh, this is kind of like um forest uh or winter wolf uh where it does five blue whenever there's 13 plus this is the same thing except it does eight which makes it quite a bit more viable because obviously eight has quite a bit of a decent chance to extra turn when there's 13. so if you can get this condition constantly going over and over and over again it can be okay because it feeds back into itself with red overall that's generally not what happens and just kind of sits there not hitting for any damage because it's not hitting triple not getting any mana accumulation because it's not getting 13 plus uh reds and overall we'll just probably end up transforming the turban the second you cast them so overall it tends to be pretty underwhelming pretty luck based and just too many conditions to really bother using though when it works it can work very effectively it's the main way that you win the pure faction but outside the context of the pure faction not really used uh we're a raven one of the ones added in the most recent season just drain some mana it's kind of just like a mana draining option if you want something that can drain all of the enemies uh it's kind of like a famine alternative if you don't want famine it ends up boosting based on lincothropy gems and also has some lincothropy gem creation overall pretty underwhelming however it can be alternative uh cheaper man uh, drainer if you kind of want a low rarity option that does so though epic isn't super low rarity and also you have sloth underneath common so if you really want something like that you can do that however this has the benefit of course of not draining your own team uh, as far as rare shark ends up inflicting uh, bleed on an enemy if they use a uh, blue uh, mana inflicts it twice more and then there's a five percent chance to devour them for every single link of the gem obviously you would need a lot of link of the gems for this to even be viable however if you somehow had 20 of them on the board you'd have a hundred percent chance to devour that's basically going to happen zero times ever pretty much <laughs> or at least very close to it so yeah he's pretty bad uh, even if you had like 50% of hour from it, it's, it's still not going to do much and just not something you're really going to bother with. As far as the uh, Wear Varine, he is a, um, he ends up dealing some damage to an enemy. And uh, there, if there are any Lincothropy gems on the board, he will inflict them with uh, Lincothropy and then get his mana back. Overall, nothing really too special. He's a bit of a spammer troop, however, he has such ridiculously low damage compared to other spammer troops that you might as well use them or just not use them at all because they eat up your turn every single time you cast them. Uh, which can lead to some really devastating things that makes uh, for very weak battles and uh, rather slow. As far as Werewolf, it ends up having the whole, uh, this was what we were mentioning earlier with Villager, has the whole Werewolf uh, um, Villager kind of back and forth. Generally, if you're going to be using the combo, you start with Werewolf and then you go back to Villager and then go back. Uh, they both have Stealthy. So, uh, actually, never mind. Uh, the other one has Stealthy. This one actually does not have Stealthy. It has uh, Skull Dodge. Um, but it's uh, mostly just used for kind of blue to purple convert. Overall, pretty underwhelming. Can be good. Pick up, if nothing else, for um, Arena. But outside that context, you're not really going to be using it much. Uh, Wild Fang is uh, yet another one of those of those hard counter uh, gnolls, and this one specifically for yellow. Similar to the tradition of the ones that are underneath uh, Epics being pretty bad, this one isn't particularly good. It's a little bit better than the others, though. Uh, one interesting gimmick it has, it has half mana start compared to the others, so you only need six mana for its first cast instead of uh, the full amount. So that's kind of nice. However, that's not really enough to justify it in most situations, and overall it doesn't get used too often. Uh, Wild Knight's actually surprisingly good. Um, it's pretty much free win for Wild Court. However, it can be used outside of uh, Wild Court as a pretty decent, well-rounded tank. It explodes a gem, so it has board control, gains a bunch of life and attack, so not only does it gain durability, but also gains offensive capability. It's boosted by green, so it has boost ratio, so in things like Arena, it goes absolutely crazy. And even outside of Arena, earlier on in the game, into mid-game, it can still get some pretty decent value. And on top of all that, it gains a barrier. Overall, pretty decent trip. Uh, if you're looking for like a nice, solid tank, for early on in the game, you just throw a bunch of uh, Chaos Shards at uh, Wild Court, and you just got yourself a solid tank. And once you get it fully traded, it has even more tankiness, 33% uh, skull reduction. So it also gets to inflict Hunter's Mark whenever it takes skull damage, which uh, makes it do even more damage with its attack. So overall, very well-rounded, just decent tank. Pretty nice. This covers a lot of grounds. Um, not the best thing in the game, however, um, very viable for well, as you're progressing through the game in Arena. And um, even if I was to use it this late in the game, it, it could still be very usable. Um, definitely pretty solid, though there are better options out there. But um, still very solid nonetheless. Uh, Willie the Anchor uh, ends up uh, gaining a bunch of gold, submerges itself, sinks to the bottom of the team. Uh, or sinks to the bottom. Why does this say sink to the bottom? I, that means it goes to the bottom of the team. I'm not sure why it has that wording. And then gains an uh, extra turn. Uh, overall, pretty underwhelming. Uh, it's one of those movement trips, so generally the ones that move to first slot are the most viable. 
Um, it's nice to see more movement troops, but it just doesn't really do enough to really follow up on it to justify ever using it. Uh, next up, we have ourselves uh, Zian Mayo. As far as this thing, it is a useless old event trip. This happens to gain barrier. Nothing else. It has boss slaying, so we can kill a boss and then gain barrier. Very situational. Probably not worth it compared to the other ones that gain extra turn or have better effects that can loop in other similar things. Uh, Yaga's Hut you would never directly use on your team. However, it's summoned off of Baba Yaga. Uh, it has triple damage to silence enemies. And uh, it's one of those that kind of just applies a silence. There's a triple to it. And um, yeah, it's just that. Actually, no, it doesn't actually apply silence, does it? Uh, it only does it if they are specifically silenced. It doesn't have to reapply. Um, only the double damage ones, I believe, have to reapply on it. It's kind of like the Hunter's Mark one with the other summon, where something summons the thing that does the triple damage to a stats effect while also applying that stats effect, and then you need to go and use the thing that gets summoned in order to go and do it. So it's a, one of those kind of premises, kind of like off of Falconer, where it does it triple damage for the Hunter's Mark, where the Falconer places the Hunter's Mark, but the thing that has the triple damage does not have the capability of applying that effect. It just does triple damage to what was already applied. Applied. So it's basically the same thing because of course Baba Yaga does the double silence and does triple damage to the thing and uh, it gets summoned off of it. So kind of same premise as that, just off of epics instead of off of uh, lower rarity stuff. As far as Yero, uh, ends up converting all uh, yellow gems to uh, purple, then creates two more for each purple gem, uh, or sorry, uh, creates um, two more purple gems for each enemy with a status effect. This only stacks up to once per enemy, so it can only do up to eight. So overall, not the greatest because of that limitation. If it was for literally every single status effect, so this would be a completely different troop and uh, could actually be pretty viable. However, unfortunately, it only checks each troop once regardless of how many status effects they are afflicted with, which uh, is rather unfortunate. He could have been very broken and then he wasn't. Uh, as far as uh, Zephyros ends up destroying a column and then deals a bunch of scatter damage, uh, boosted by uh, yellow gems. Overall, not really too good, but can be a pretty decent option for Arena, if nothing else. And as far as the very final one, we have, unfortunately, a pretty useless Tower Slaying troop. It does have some red explode there, but overall, not the greatest. So, that's kind of a good way to wrap up uh, the epics. Pretty much the summary of them. Not the greatest. They're really weird typing. They're pretty expensive for what they are, uh, with how much you need to upgrade them, relative to Legends and Mythics that have unique traits, compared to Ultra Rares that uh, have much substantially lower uh, cost to end up doing it. So overall, it's it's just so weird. Um, it's just a really weird typing. Uh, a lot of pretty useless stuff. There's like a handful of good things in there, but a good majority of them are more underwhelming than things below them, and obviously uh, more underwhelming than things above them. But anyways, next two videos, we'll go cover all the legends, all the mythics, and uh, finally get these wrapped up. Feel free to leave a like on the video. It helps out a lot, and it's greatly appreciated. This will hopefully be the longest one. Hopefully the other ones won't be uh, up to about two hours like this one is. Uh, we'll see, as the mythics could go a little bit longer. We'll see. Uh, though they might go be the shortest one, because there's the least amount of mythics, so... Uh, even if we do go a little bit more in depth, um, there's just so much less of them. It probably won't end up being as bad. But uh, anyways, guys, I'll wrap it up for now. Uh, tomorrow we'll have the Legends. The following day we'll have the Mythics. And if I have time, I'll try to get the event video up that following Monday, which should be the next day in the cycle. And uh, we'll go from there. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I'll catch you guys soon. Goodbye, everyone. And thanks for watching.